Hello, good morning, good afternoon, James Dunquake. My name is Zoe Vermillion, and welcome to today's episode of Runners Wanted. We've got a fun one for you. We're doing a King's Quest showcase, the first seven games in the King's Quest series, back to back. It's going to be a great time. If you've never seen these runs, you're in for a treat. Uh, before we jump into the runs, I do want to make a few brief announcements. SGDQ 2021 online is July 4th to the 11th. Uh, game submissions are open and they close tomorrow. So be sure to prep your submissions if you would like to be part of SGDQ 2021 from the comfort of your own home. Uh, and if you're interested in, vo in volunteering for SGDQ 2021 online, uh, those volunteer submissions are now open. Uh, check gamesdonequick.com for more info about that. Uh, if you are watching this episode later on our YouTube channel and would like to support our live content, please consider checking out our Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash GDQ. If you have an Amazon Prime account, you can subscribe to any Twitch channel of your choice every month for free. Please consider using your Prime Gaming account to subscribe to GDQ Twitch channel. Um, but I'll have a few more to mention a bit later. Uh, but before that, I do want to go ahead and just introduce our first runner of the day, Chuck Brody. How you doing, Chuck? Hey, Zoe, how you doing? I am doing great, fantastic. Happy to be here. Uh, this has been something we've had in the works for, for quite some time, dating all the way back to the glorious year of 2020, if I remember correctly, when I first reached out to y'all. Yeah, I've been, we've been looking forward to it quite a bit. Yeah, it's going to be it's gonna be great. Um, just King's Quest is great. Uh, for those that don't know, I was hosting for uh, Jackie's uh, run during uh, Fleet Fatale, and I fell in love with that run, I looked into the other ones and said, okay, I need this community on my show. Let's make this happen. Uh, so I'm glad that all of y'all were as excited as I was. Absolutely. I'm, I'm glad. Uh, all right. The, <laughs> sorry, go ahead. No, no, it's good. It's good. Yeah, uh, well, the floor is yours. Uh, I'm sure we're in for, uh, for quite a long run here. So I'm just going to grab my water bottle and take a sip of water that'll last more than two minutes. Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, ready. Um, so anyways, we're going to start with, um, the first game, of course, King's Quest Quest for the Crown. This was, um, originally released on the IBM PC Jr. way back in 1983. Um, I will say for the speed run, we do not run that version. That is a very slow version. Every screen transition and literally has to draw it line by line as it goes down, even on the fastest of computers. Um, instead we run the, um, 1987 release, I do believe, which is a lot more optimized for uh, well computers of that time. Um, so in this run, before I start this and just so I can preface a lot of this, because this run goes very fast, is about right now the world record stands at a minute seven. Um, I'm not going to get anywhere near that because I'm not that good. <laughs> However, you're going to see me moving around very, moving Graham around very fast. Um, we do what are known as zips, where is where um, you go to the fast speed, which just pretty much um, unthrottles the game completely, and Graham literally moves as fast as your CPU can move him, which is very fast on modern computers. Um, even computers to a certain point way back in the 80s would have this happen because it was just so volatile. So without further ado, I'm going to get into this. Um, time is going to be or time starting is going to be on restart. Um, I'm allowed to, because it's on that, um, I'm going to restart, or I'm going to hit it to restart. I'm going to preface move rock, which is the first at command that I'm going to do, and uh, put the cursor on fast. So without further ado, we shall go in three, two, one, boom. So the whole game is going to pretty much look like a big ping pong match as I go from one thing to another. I mean... When you play this game normally, um, you're kind of walking around normal, walking around and going to each thing one by one, and uh, yeah. At some point, a runner named Sillier figured out, and you're gonna see me staggering as I talk because I really have to kind of balance this. And uh, he found out that you can kind of just finish the game like this. Um, here's a well zip thing where I only have so much time underwater before Graham dies. 
and I have to hit an input very fast to be able to go right here into the dragon's cave. And first thing we get is the uh, magic mirror. I didn't go into the story. Anyways, the big uh, scavenger hunt where you have to get three treasures to get the crown. And that's pretty much the get, or the, um, that's the, that's the gist of it. It's very simple. Um, uh, uh, mushroom. So we're pretty much just doing that, going around Daventry and collecting items. Yeah, you know, items. <laughs> uh, what is it? The bag. So I, duh, 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 duh. like I said, this is very difficult to commentate. I'm trying my best. That was um, some leprechaun right there. They have a really good sound to them. And I did something wrong. There we go. Eight, three, nine, four. That was not it. Two, where am I? Two, eight, three, nine, three, nine, three. Uh oh, I'm off a little bit. Oh, uh, let's see if I can recover. No, I cannot. All right, gonna have to do something. This will give me some time to talk. <laughs> so, backing up right there. Um, you had to go to these different places. There's a leprechaun uh, group right there that had the magic shield. The dragon had the magic uh, mirror. And now we're going over to the giant's place, which has the magic chest. Um, the zips that I do, the very fast movement, it's like a big railway ride. And once you, if you mess up, you end up off the bus. So, and when you're off the bus, stuff happens, unfortunately. And that was the first one I kind of thought that was going to happen, so. So here's the big RNG section right here with this giant. Um, normally what will happen is that he'll kill you, like literally stop you to, to death, but because we have the magic shield which protects us from everything, he just kind of gets tired and falls asleep, so. Now we've gotten all the uh, treasures, and I'm literally going to go to King Edward and give it to him. Well, more to the point, he's going to fall over dead, and that's time. So, that was King's Quest Quest for the Crown. Um, a little bit longer than I was expecting it to be, but hey, we're making it work. So, we're going to move on to the second game, which is uh, King's Quest 2. I don't know if we have any transitions that we need to do in between, but I'm just going to seamlessly transition to it. Um, that was a good drink of water. Yep. <laughs> So here's uh, King's Quest II, Romancing the Throne. Um, same thing, I'm going to prep it by going to the fastest. This game, unlike the uh, sequel or the previous one, actually has more than just fast, normal, slow, and fast. It has fastest, so we're going to take advantage of that fast one, which is slightly uh, faster. Before you one. start the timer, give me just a moment to make sure everything is updated on my end. Sure. These are very fast games. Yeah. <laughs> this one's a little bit slower. Um, so I'll get to the story. Um, king Graham, after the end of the one, became the king. And he becomes very lonely, sitting on top of the crown of the throne by himself. And he sees into his magic mirror that there's a woman stuck in a tower. And he decides, I'm going to go save her. And then we go here to the land of, I believe it's Kalima. And we're going to go save her. And we're going to do that by, you guessed it, finding three keys to open three doors, go to this magic tower land, and then save her. Time. It's oh, okay. And if I wait long enough, uh, the intro keeps repeating. So we have that. We have a cage. We're ready to go. You ready? Yep. Alrighty. So three, two, one. Let's jam. And I died. Don't restart. The time. I started, my speed runs the same way, by the way. <laughs> this run is very RNG heavy, unlike the previous one. So first thing we do is go to Hagatha's cave. Hagatha is a well, a hag. She is immortal. You can't stop her. If she sees you, she kills you. And we need that nightingale that's in that cage right there that's going jittering around. And to do that, we have to just cycle her RNG and steal the cage. If you steal the cage while she's in there, she kills you. The second thing we're going to do is grab this triton right here, go to the bottom of the screen, go over here, grab a necklace out of this, and Hagatha's going to kill us again. Um, there's a couple of encounters, a lot of... Uh, very scary uh, guys around. Um, 
I'll get to them once we get them to them. So there's these magic doors over there that would lead over to that. Um, uh, whoops. Rip. I'm trying to remember to uh, make safety saves. There we go. So... Oh, oh, we're gonna wave the trend. So there's multiple doors that we have to open, and like I said, we have to get keys to do that. So we gotta go over to them, but first thing we have to do is read these inscriptions that are on them. And that's how we find out where our quest is. So the first thing we had to do was get the key from King Triton over there. And the next thing we need to do... And then, uh oh, all right. There's an RNG right here. There's an enchanter that turns oh 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 that turns us into a frog that is very RNG heavy. And more often than not, he shows up. I think it's a 66% chance that he shows up rather than not. Okay. So we give this lady that uh, nightingale we got from Hagatha's thing, and we. Um, And she gives us a magic genie lamp, so then we use that to get up to this area. Uh, toss bridle, oopsie doodle, snake, talk horse. Now we're good. All right, cool. So we go that. Um, so that snake right there was actually a unicorn or a pegasus, whatever you want to call it. And we freed it from the enchantment that the enchanter put it under. And I'm off the boat again. Uh, there we go. And in return, he gives us a magical, whoopsie doodles, uh, sugar cube. And we need that for later. And once again, our friend the Enchanter showing up. Um, I don't think we've seen him, but there's a dwarf as well. The door. And the uh, dwarf. Rip. Uh, 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 uh. Steal stuff from us. Um, there's different... This is very similar to uh, the previous game in that there's a bunch of items that the dwarf can just steal from you. All right, so I didn't talk about the glitch that we did in the uh, other run, um, unfortunately. There was one, but it was very subtle. Here's another funny glitch. Um, so there's Dracula's castle in the middle. Oh, whoops. I already did it. Whoops. <laughs> I'll just do it. Okay. So we're going to drink the sea right here, which is the river sticks, and we're going to cross the river sticks by choking to death. Um, just trying to find a nice good way to explain a lot of this stuff. Um, <laughs> get candle. Oopsie doodles. So the fact that you're able to talk and play it all is astounding to me right now. I have ran this game. I think my splits say about twenty eight hundred times at this point. So uh, it's a it's a it's a juggle. Get the pillow. Get the key. So anyways, that glitch works because I'm not entirely sure why a runner named Santa Claus kind of came up with it or discovered it recently and has completely smashed my old world record. And it's an interesting one because normally what you would have to do is uh, death right here. You would have to give him one of the items and oh, come on, buddy. which was kind of annoying because I got a little RNG factor of the dwarf robbing you. Um, unlock the door, boom, there we go. So, eh, now we're in the tower region. And the first thing we do is uh, grab a grab a net, and then we get the, grab this fish, and then it ferries us over here. Then over here we find an amulet on the ground, which we need. I was making sure to do that. The movements very very carefully because I could just go whoosh, and there we go okay so we're almost at the end uh, now we're in the tower where our love of our life is and we're gonna climb it real quick but the last thing we have to do there's a, a lion here so we had a ham that we found and he's just really hungry so we're gonna do that and to be nice you could just go home right now here's the here's a love of our life Balinese but you know you got to be nice to her you know you don't just grab her and say we're going you know you got to kiss her there we go, and that's nice. So, home, and that's uh, time. GG's. And then this just repeats 
for infinity. <laughs> so, yeah, um, that was King's Quest 1 and King's Quest 2. I sure went a lot longer than I thought it was going to be, but hey, got to try to make this work, eh? So, yeah. Yeah, um, thanks for having me. Um, I'll probably, I'm going to be back on for commentary for some of the later runs. Um, enjoy King's Quest 3 AGD with David TKI and uh, the rest of the showcase. And thanks for having yeah. me on. Thank you so much, Chuck. This was a pleasure. A uh, great way to get things started. Um, stick around, everybody. We're going to uh, step away for just a brief moment uh, to get the next run prepped, uh, but we won't be gone long. So uh, you don't want to step too far away or else you could risk missing a run. Uh, I know the next one's a bit longer, but still, it's funny because these runs are so fast. <laughs> uh, Hang tight, we'll be back. And we're back. Uh, we have a piece of bonus content that I completely forgot about. So if you missed the King's Quest 1 speed run, uh, don't worry. Got something else for you. Uh, I'll let Chuck introduce what's about to happen. Zipped on by. <laughs> Um, I, we forgot to show you the King's Quest 1 task that was put together by my friend uh, Dr. D2K9. Um, and speaking of zipping by, you're about to see something go that is very fast and very easy. So you thought the speed run was quick, just about a little over a minute optimally. This one's going to, this is under 30 seconds. So I'm just probably going to let it play. I'll explain exactly how it went. And then add a little bit of information then be on my way. So without further ado, this is the current task for the uh, King's Quest for King's Quest 1, Quest for the Crown. So did you blink? Because you probably would have missed it. So anyway, so um, what happened here was um, the order of events is he goes about, or he runs this on an emulator, I believe it's called JP Sleeve slash RR, and he runs it not exactly how we do in the speed run. He does it in a way that is more akin uh, to the task rules or something related to this. He has to run it at a speed that would be equal to how it was at the time. So I think it's, I'm not, I think it's 20 megahertz or something clock speed for the CPU. But anyways, because he's able to just set everything perfectly, it moves so fast. Um, and the order of events that he did it was, uh, he got the clover, he got the walnut, he got the pebbles, he opened the nut while traveling to the gnome, he walked, water walked over the river west of his hut, and that which I actually forgot to say, when you're close enough to the side of the screen, on any side of the screen, you can literally walk across anything without dying. Um, he guessed the gnome's name correctly, he got the beans, he water walked off the screen to the north, to the west of the gnome, he got over to the mushroom island, um, he gets the mushroom, he falls in the pit, he does the underground area with the rat um, and the uh, leprechauns, as usual. He eats the shroom, he leaves the underground, he gets a dagger, he does the well, goes down to the well, um, throws the water at the dragon to get the mirror, plants the beans, climbs the beanstalk, gets the slingshot, kills the giant, gets the chest, returns to the castle, and bows to the king. Um, that is vastly different than our speed run because climbing the beanstalk is extremely difficult. Um, the pixels in which you can actually like move around on are just so janky, and because there's no mouse control, it's really hard to do that with a keyboard. But um, yeah. Um, that's pretty much uh, the task for it. It's uh, it's an interesting thing, and we're looking in. He's been looking into doing um, more tasks for more of the games that run. Um, he's had uh, a prototype one for King's Quest VI um, that's a little more akin to the speed run, and it's just a lot of work, and he only has so much time to work on it. But all of us in the community have really been looking forward to seeing what he comes up with next. Anyways, yeah, um, that was the King's Quest one task, and. Um, Glad we could show it to you. So, anyways. Yeah, that was that was a thing. I, I love that it, it took you two to three times longer to explain the task route than the task took to do it. Isn't that something? <laughs> that is that is bizarre. 
Oh, that was a treat. Anyway, we uh, are now actually going to get set up for King's Quest 3. Um, so thank you all for sticking around to watch the, uh, the task. And if you stepped away to get water, I apologize. Um, <laughs> but we'll be back with more King's Quest content in just a moment. And we are back. Hope y'all are ready for some more King's Quest shenanigans. Uh, before we jump into it, as I mentioned earlier, I had a couple more announcements I wanted to make. Uh, now is a good time as any. Um, if you didn't know, your subs, gift subs, Amazon Prime subs, and bits cheered on the GDQ Twitch channel help support our weekly Hotfix content. So thank you so much for supporting our shows. Um, speaking of our shows, if you want more info on all of our Hotfix shows, that is available at gamesdonequick.com slash hotfix. And from there, you can find more information about submitting your runs to any of our weekly shows. Um, and then coming up right after this episode, we are actually going to have another Hotfix show event thing. Big John's Jumblematic Randomizer. It's going to have random randomized goals. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. Uh, that'll be very shortly after Runners Wanted is over, scheduled for 6 p.m. Eastern. So hopefully these King's Quest runs keep going as speedy as they have been. Um, but I guess that's up to our next runner. David, how are you doing, David? I'm doing okay. I'm nervous, but I know that's going to go away as soon as I start. Yeah, I'm sure you'll be fine. Uh, but you're here with King's Quest Three, and this uh, this looks more modern than what we just got through seeing. Yes. Why is that? Yes. So this is not the original King's Quest Three. Uh, this is AGD Interactive's fan remake of King's Quest Three, and I've decided I put in the argument to show off this version for two reasons. The first is to show that. Yes, we do run the fan remakes. Uh, they do have their own following, and they, they would like to see runs too. But the second one is that the original uh, King's Quest Three has a 15-minute wait where you do nothing. So I figured this would be a better version to show off than that. It, it's roughly the same length, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, so just <laughs> same length, but you don't have the, the 15 minutes of waiting, so it's just more spread out, I guess? Yeah. yeah that's good. Be better... Better to show off, otherwise, I guess we could just have another bathroom break mid-run, and that's, that's always interesting. Um, but, yeah, whenever you're ready, give us a countdown. We'll get this timer started, and we can uh, keep going. All right. Uh, we, we'll start the time on clicking this play button, so we'll do that in three, two, one, go. So we're not playing as uh, King Graham this time. We're instead playing a completely different, unrelated character named Gwydion. Uh He is the slave to this wizard, Mananen, who's going to give me a chore. I have to know what this chore is. It's random. Kitchen's filthy. Okay, that's reasonable, RNG. There's four possible chores he could give me at the beginning. You got to do the one that he gives you. Uh, kitchen is okay because it's right here. It's fairly long, but you don't have to go out of your way for it. Uh, while I'm here, I'm picking up a few things. So... Gwydion has been enslaved by the wizard Mananen for pretty much his entire life, and he's about to turn 18. Unfortunately, Mananen has a policy of killing his slaves when they turn 18, so we need to get out of here. Uh, so, you'll notice, first of all, this is AGD's remake. It goes a lot slower than the AGI games, so in that sense, it's a little bit easier to pick up than because it's a little less intimidating. You can actually follow what's going on on screen. After a while, Mananen is going to go on a journey and let you know the timer turns green. Uh, that's an indication of how long you have until uh, he gets back. When it's green, you have plenty of time. Uh, while he's gone, you can do stuff like poke around his belongings and he won't kill you for doing so. So we're gonna grab some stuff here. The most important thing to grab is the magic map, but there's also a key which uh, which gets you access to his wand. But we just need those things, and then we're going to go out into the world. Uh, I better safety save for here, because uh, I have fallen off this ledge many times. Uh, King's Quest is kind of uh, unforgiving in that they let you walk off ledges all the time. Uh, but one nice thing about this remake is that the eagle is not RNG. Uh, the original game had kind of a notorious bit where you had to go on a certain screen and wait for an eagle to drop a feather that you need for a spell. But on this, in this version, you can just give the eagle the meat and then it's good. So we're going out into the world while the wizard's away. Uh, we're gonna be, hold on, that's not right. We're gonna be collecting spell ingredients along the way because in order for us to escape the wizard, we're going to need to be able to turn his magic back against him. Uh, but every spell requires ingredients. 
So we're going to go around the world collecting what we can. Uh, one of the there's a couple of changes in this remake. Uh, there's an additional spell, so that some additional ingredients are needed. In particular, I need two cups of ocean water, one of which I'm going to stick in that bowl and use it for later. Uh, that's going to set a flag, though, where the game thinks I'm in the middle of a spell already. So the, the spell that requires the bowl of ocean water, uh, the storm spell, I have to do that spell first. Thankfully, I don't need any other spells to get the ingredients for that one. Uh, this library was also added to this game. Uh, in it, I found a diary, which uh, the, the remake decided to run with it and have it be the diary of the previous slave, who unfortunately did go on the same adventure, but did not manage to find all the spell ingredients before his time ran out. Oh, Three Bears, Little Bear's House, I Steal Baby Bear's Porridge. I'm a hero, everyone. Uh, the, the, the fertile soil from the... Uh-oh. Bad luck. Robbers. I should have safety saved there. That's right. I need a bit of sand. Um, this should be all the ingredients I need for the first set of spells. Unfortunately, uh, AGD's remakes have a tendency to not let you do certain activities unless you know that you can do that activity. So the bandit hideout, it's hidden uh, in a tree trunk. Uh, in a hole, but the only way to get access to that is to turn into a fly and actually see that the rope is in there. So uh, you need the fly spell first before you can do that. Oh, and uh, there is a combination to the laboratory now. Uh, the previous uh, slaves book has the combination, uh, other, and it's set the first time you look in the book. Uh, it would probably be faster to screenshot this and then, and then, uh, and then do it, but whatever. So we get access to the lab the first time. I only have enough ingredients for three spells, but that's good. Uh, those three spells will get me access to the ingredients for the rest of the spells. Uh, one of the spells is skippable. So this is the most infamous part of, uh, King's Quest 3, the spell casting. You've got a whole bunch of spells that you're going to be doing here. You need to follow these steps exactly. Uh, messing up any one step will instantly kill you. And and at least in this version, you can read the uh, spell book and see what the steps are. But if you want to uh, do this uh, optimally, then you're going to be uh, doing most of the steps blind and remembering everything. And you gotta remember the small quirks between spells, like say the musical talent spell uh, is the only one that does the wand before the incantation. Uh, that's two spells. The third one is the easiest one, the turn into a fly spell. Uh, you mix two things, recite, uh, use the magic wand, and then you're done. That's three spells down. And yes, I memorized all of that. I'm not looking at any notes. Oh, kitty, uh, I did not grab the cat hair yet. You are uh, Gwydion does not care for this cat, and I don't either because he runs away. But I need some of his cat hair. Come here, come here. Nope. Uh, the cat is hidden behind. Uh, yeah, it's a uh, cat later. This is a terrible room for doing it in. Uh, I do have enough uh, ingredients. Let's see, enough spells to get the other spells. So we're going to go back to near the bandit's hideout here. Uh, pluck the wings off this fly and dip it into this rose essence. You can see a rope hidden on, in the tree here. But while we're here, grab some acorns. Climb up. Uh, you need to see that there's a figure sleeping in here. Uh, hold on, safety save. Just in case I mess this up. Uh, a, a misstep anywhere will kill me. Uh, since I steal the money from the bandit camp, I can now go to the general store and buy like four spell ingredients. Let's see, right here. You can buy, 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 buy. One small change added to the AGD remake is this uh, fiddle that's in the tavern here. You're going to need this in order to get everything you need for the cat cookie spell, but the bartender won't let you take it unless you show that you're musically talented. Luckily, I have a spell that makes me musically talented. Maybe, maybe cheating a little bit there. Oh, and uh, the, another small change here. Uh, the mandrake root is hidden in this cave. You're not seeing the, uh, the magic stone here. Uh, the mandrake root is one of the last ingredients for the cat cookie spell. And the oracle here is going to tell me a little bit about Gwydion's background. 
good. It turns out, Gwydion, it is actually related to King Graham. King Graham is his father, and Gwydion is his son, who was abducted at birth. So, you know, this, this whole game takes place 17 years after the previous one. The Oracle tells me my backstory, and she also tells me that Daventry is being attacked by a three-headed dragon, and uh, Graham is too paralyzed with grief and fear to uh, take it on. So it's up to Alexand sorry, Gwydion to, uh, to uh, take on the dragon. So I should have uh, just, uh, just a few more screens left of gathering spell ingredients. First things first, uh, this fiddle is going to be given to this guy here, who I think is a call forward to King's Quest IV. But uh, he has a jug of refillable water, which you have to look at to get the magic keyword. And then you use it to get something out of the rock here, which, which is a missing page from the spell book. The, a missing page from the cat cookie spell. So that's another thing that the remake does to throw you off. You have to find like two things before you have that freedom from uh, Mananen. And then uh, Medusa is no longer a random encounter in the desert. She is now, she now has her own place here and has been rena renamed Smod. Uh, there's two solutions to her. Just show her the mirror straight off, but that's not the solution that's worth the most points. Uh, the, the solution that's worth the most points is to approach her and uh, answer her questions in earnest and not be repulsed by her. But unfortunately, this is any percent. Just showing her the mirror straight off the bat is faster and allows you to get the Amber Stone or the Teleported Random spell. Uh, that's every single uh, ingredient that we need for all the spells. And uh, wait, that's not. I don't have the cat here. Where is the cat? Don't tell me the cat's in the basement. Well, okay, not now. Uh, sorry, this is not the way it went in practice. I usually have cat hair at this point. Uh, my cat likes to hide in the basement too, it's okay. Well, he's not in the basement, because when you close the basement door, he comes, comes out. Is he in the kitchen? This is actually wasting a lot of time, because that timer is still green, but the amount of time until Mananen comes back home is random, and when the timer turns yellow, then I know I don't have much time left. Where is that cat? Is he upstairs? Maybe the observatory. Yeah, he's up here, you. Come, come here. And he's hiding behind the scenery! That's his typical cat things. Uh... There he is! King's Quest 3 is the I can't find my cat simulator. <laughs> and he's hiding behind the scenery! How do I even get him while he's here? Uh... There, there come here, you. Finally, he got his hair! <laughs> uh, the wizard is actually being gone for a long time right now. Which is good. That gives me at least enough time to do the cat cookie spell. Uh, if you're unlucky, that timer will have already, already turned yellow at this point. And yellow basically means he's gonna be back soon, you better start heading back. And then it'll turn red to indicate he'll be back any moment now. Anyways, I do have at least enough time for two spells. Uh, let's see. Grind these things. Uh, stone goes in here. Sha la la la, kiss the stone. And then recite spell, wave wand. I now have a stone that can teleport me uh, randomly anywhere. Save game before each spell because a single misclick will kill me. Uh, hold on a sec. Next is the nightshade spell, the sleeping spell. So grind the acorns, do that. Get the bowl, get the bowl. Uh, hold on. Nightshade juice. Wait. Most recipes will have you stir with a spoon right before you do something with the bowl. Uh, boil it here for a bit. Spread it on the desk. Uh, one, two, sorry, that's too many. Recite spell, exit, uh, wand. And then stick in a pouch. That's the sleep spell. Uh, save again. I think I have enough time for every single spell before the wizard gets home, which is actually very kind of him. So, oops, that there was a misclick.
You shouldn't try making up your own spells. Don't try making up your own spells. It will not end well. Okay, let's try that again. Cut the cactus. Cactus goes on the spoon, not the knife. Uh, spoon goes in here. Then the Lord is here, and I'm really grateful that the that the I've done the storm spell already because the uh, the Lord and the uh, cream colored toadstool powder powder look pretty similar. Recite spell wand here jar. Uh, for the cat cookie spell, you're gonna put the page back in the book before you start doing the rest of the spell because uh, Whittian does not know to mold the cookie into shape unless that page has been returned. So let's see. Grind up the mandrake root. You're gonna you're gonna add fish oil and then cat hair. Stir with a spoon. Uh, put it on the desk. Shape it. Recite spell and then wand on it. And and that's all the spells. There's actually one more, but it's not necessary in any percent. Technically, the teleport spell isn't necessary either, but it can teleport you to. Uh, the place that you need to go if you're really lucky you're going to be using it a lot and you do have to put the magic wand back in its original location before the wizard gets home because if he appears and that wand is not there you are dead also any item in your inventory that's highlighted in blue if uh if you have it in your inventory and he sees you uh you're dead the, the wizard will kill you for pretty much any reason whatsoever so you got to know what all's gonna set him off and uh, make sure not to do it uh hide all my things under the bed so that he can't see him timer turns yellow turns red there's a nice uh hold on a sec yeah there's a nice quality of life thing where you can sleep on your bed to pass time uh normally in the original game you would just be waiting until the wizard gets home well actually in the original game uh they they managed to skip uh giving the wizard the cat cookie but yeah, he'll recognize a cat cookie anywhere, so crumble it up in the porridge, give it to him. Whoever eats it will turn into a cat. Uh, this cutscene has been spiced up a little bit for the remake, and it's not skippable, so watch it in its glory. Something is wrong. I feel strange. Really? Maybe you should curl up. Have a cat nap. What was in that porridge? A cookie? Ah, the cookie. You know, that reminds me of a poem. Root of mandrake and fish oil. With cat hair over which I toil. My spell! Alexander. From this point onward, any time you die, instead of referring to you as Gwydion, or if you look at anything, the game will now refer to you by the name given to you at birth, Prince Alexander of Daventry. Or just Alexander. With Mananan finally turned into a cat, we can escape. Go home. Uh, get all our things. Since we've cast every single spell, we don't need to go back into the lab to cast anything else. Uh, the, the teleport spell... Uh, should ideally get us outside? Good. It's kind of random. Sometimes it helps you and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, if you have all the spells that you need to progress, uh, some some uh, sailors are going to show up here in the, uh, the tavern. So you're going to give them the rest of your money for a safe passage to Daventry. I think you could probably teleport stone your way to the dock, but it pretty much never works out. And you talk to them, oh, oops, turns out they're pirates. And they throw you in the bottom deck. Oh, looks like I'm trapped here, again. Oh, wait, there's a crate here. So I could just grab this crate, uh, put it over here, and climb my way out. They did take all my stuff, though, and stick it in a chest, so I can't use my spells to get out of this just yet. So this ship is the infamous part of the original game. Uh, it takes 
15 minutes for the ship to reach Daventry in the middle. And this remake, we're just gonna go with scripted events instead. I uh, gotta go on this screen a couple of times. They're gonna take me to a treasure island, which is a bit that was added to the remake. Kind of replaces the whole X marks the spot thing in the original game. We've got a few puzzles here. For example, we've got this bridge with this balancing puzzle. There's three weights. They start with a small one. That's a little unfortunate. Uh, best RNG is if it starts with a big one. But yeah, you're going to drink potions to match the weight that it gives you because there are ledges on, there are latches on the side here. It's going to let them go. Uh, you're going to drink the potion regularly to <clears throat> to match the weight on each side so the bridge doesn't tip over. Kind of a simple little puzzle. But then once you get to the middle, you're going to have to pull this lever to latch the correct side so that when you walk the rest of the bridge, it will not uh, tip over and send you into the into the gorge. The, the little piece of paper they've given you is a hint to this puzzle here, which just gives you a whole bunch of colors, but it tells you that the right way through this swamp is that sequence that I'm just clicking right there. Uh, next is this screen, which has a few uh, blocks which you are going to put into the archway. Five of them are correct, two of them you don't need, and the two you don't need are always these two. If you go through the archway without putting in the uh, correct stones, which again, the, uh, the piece of paper you have uh, gives you the correct answer, then uh, you get a little uh, Easter egg for Quest for Glory 2 VGA. And then you've got one last puzzle here where this spirit tells you, get these items in their true order, and which goes uh, food first, uh, labor second, knowledge third, treasure is worthless. You do all that, he gives you this chest, which is what the pirates were looking for, but you need this green ball, which uh, is going to be a MacGuffin that magically restores Daventry at the end of the game. Yay, the pirates have what they're looking for now. And now Alexander uh, gets told to do, do chores again. Such is life. Yeah, uh, the... Uh, the, the, uh, the pirate there is going to give you the chores one at a time. You can't do the next one until he tells you the next one. While we're up here, grab the broom. I have actually tried falling down to the lower decks before to see if that was faster, but unfortunately they take my broom away when they do that, so don't try falling. Next thing he tells me to do, swab the, up, swab the upper decks with that broom that I just picked up. So, right here. Yeah, three chores, and then we go to sleep again. Uh... This is way faster than the original game. Again, 15 minutes. You might think now's a good time to get your stuff back, but the game won't let you try. The captain would probably notice. So you just dust his room and then go back here, go to sleep for a bit. And then finally, we are near Daventry and they throw me into the bottom deck again to uh, prevent me from trying to escape. Luckily, though, they leave this room unguarded, and I can finally get my stuff back and uh, start casting spells again. So, safety save here. One of the things I can do is teleport stone my way to the basement, and wow, that actually worked. Uh, there's actually much better odds of you teleporting to one of the upper decks where the pirates catch you and then throw you back down here with, with all your stuff taken away again. But yeah, that's random. Turn into an eagle, you're finally on the shore of Daventry. You're going to be using this uh, teleport stone to skip most of these rooms. In the original game, you could use it to pretty much teleport all the way to the dragon. But in this one, you're just going to teleport to the end of the room, walk to the next room. And you are going to see the abominable snowman here. A uh, little thing uh, that was in the original, but you probably won't see. It's mandatory now. There's multiple ways past this guy. Uh, you can just teleport stone twice and uh, just run past him. That's probably the fastest way, but another way is to lure him into that cave, then teleport out, or use the sleep spell there. Uh, that brings you to this cave system, uh, which has been changed again from the original. In the original, it was a very challenging platforming seg segment where you would probably fall at any opportunity. Uh, now it's just a series of which, uh, which exit leads you to which passage. The third time you end up in the lower right, uh, the Yeti's going to appear and start chasing you, so you better have memorized the passages at this point. When you start here, it's a, you repeat 112 until the Yeti appears. Once the Yeti appears, it's 11221. Uh, right, one, uh, two. Why not just throw a pie? Unfortunately, I don't have a pie.
Oh yeah, and that, the Yeti breaks the way open for you, so once you end up in the lower right here, you can advance once more. And then this remake is going to have the Yeti say, uh, I should go to Serenia, which is where the fifth game takes place. So, you know, a little tie in there. Also, eagle-eyed viewers probably saw Cedric on one of the previous screens. But, but yeah, here's Daventry. It's on fire. Uh, here's the uh, cave that leads to the clouds. So I'm going to need two spells here. The invisibility spell that I got earlier is going to make sure I can get over here where this dragon can't see me. For some reason, I have to be here to then, to then use this storm spell, which kills the dragon and allows me to rescue my sister, Princess Rosella. I can't use the teleport stone a anymore at this point. I have to walk all the way back to Castle Daventry. But yeah, triumphant music. And don't, don't worry, Rosella may have been captured and not been able to do anything in this game, but in the next game, she's going to be the primary protagonist. Uh, we just have one small bit here, walking our way back to the castle, which uh, can be a little bit dangerous. So two safety saves. First is this screen with these flames in between these cracks. But the flames are always the same pattern, so you can just uh, step right through them with the timings, right? But then here we've got some crumbling blocks, which uh, it's random which ones are safe, but you do a safety save, you can fall and then see which ones are safe, or you can wait and see which ones rumble. Uh, time's gonna be uh, coming up when we step into Castle Daventry. That's gonna be pretty soon. Through uh, this gate right here. And time. Woo! So there we go. That's King's Quest Three AGD's remake. The cat did not ruin the estimate. That estimate is very generous. But I mean, does, I kind of assumed that uh, I would have to. Um, that I would have to uh, wait for the wizard to get home and then go to sleep again. My, my PB and world record is just below 22 minutes. Oh, nice. And yeah, so this was 24.07? Oh, that's not too bad. Uh, anyway, Thank you. sorry? Oh, good. Yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. Or is yours? No, I was just going to say, uh, let, let, let's look forward to uh, King's Quest IV, because that one is the first game that Sierra ever wrote in their SCI engine, SCI version 0, and I absolutely love SCI 0 games. I need to pick up King's Quest IV sometime. It should be exciting. I'm uh, going to go back to the Sierra version. This has already been so fun, and the upcoming games uh, are just going to be so wacky. Um, so thank you so much, David. This was a great run. Uh, we are going to step away briefly and get set up for King's Quest IV, and uh, we will be right back. All right, thank you. And we are back. Uh, I am still Zovermillion. I am joined by our King's Quest IV runner, uh, TKS, and we have Chuck Grody on commentary. Uh, before I throw the mic over to them, I do just want to remind everyone that your subs, gift subs, Amazon Prime subs, and bits cheered on the GDQ Twitch channel help support our weekly Hot Picks content. So thank you so much for supporting our shows. Uh, with that out of the way, though, floor is y'all's. All right. Uh, welcome to King's Quest Four. I'm here with uh, Top Keck Shrek. Um, hey it's a little under the weather, so okay. I'm going to be taking over a lot of the <laughs> commentary as well. Appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you. This is King Quest Four. <laughs> this is the uh, this is the SCI uh, release of the game. There's a couple versions that were released. One was using um, King Quest One, Two, and original King Quest Three graphics. Uh, this one uses some enhanced graphics. Um, and great game. And without further ado, we're just going to get started. So. We're going to start the run in three, two, one, go. Go. 
So the first Alrighty. thing we do there is we uh, grab a ball and we go into this person's house and we start cleaning because it's a big mess. And we get to wait here for I think it's approximately like three uh, three minutes and thirty something seconds. It's a long time. Um, it's a very long time that we have to wait. It's the best part of uh, the run, definitely. Oh yeah, it, it plays this very long cleaning animation, and then the seven dwarves come back. They all grab some soup, and uh, the girl Rosie is gonna eat some soup as well with them. And it just takes forever. And you, you can't skip it. You just have to wait in, uh, until they're done eating. So. I think, it, <laughs> I think this spot right here is actually the perfect spot to talk about the plot up to this point. Um, you want me to do it? Oh, uh, please. That'd be great. Yeah. So, um, as you saw, King's Quest 1 and King's Quest 2, that's our primary center on Graham. King's Quest 3 was about Graham's son, Alexander. We, um, getting away or escaping from the evil wizard who adopt, who uh, stole him from his crib as a child, raised him for 18 years, and was essentially going to kill him. At the end, literally at the end of King's Quest Three, as Rosella and Alexander are approaching the throne, where both King Graham, Queen Valen Queen Valenice are uh, looking on to them, and King Graham takes his uh, um, adventurer's hat. He goes up to him. And he flings it in the air because he's going to say, I'm done adventuring. It's time to go to the next generation. And as it's going through the air, it's literally arcing through the air, King Graham, because of all the stress he's had to endure for 18 years, literally has a heart attack right there and collapses. And so they, uh, uh, they rush him to his bed, monitoring him, and they're almost certain he's going to die. Rosella is heartbroken, runs out, crying on the throne, the magic mirror lights up, and a woman named um, <laughs> Janesta took me took me a second. <laughs> <laughs> Comes up and says, "My land, uh, my land of Tamir is in peril. I need your help to get my magic talisman back, as I myself am also dying. But there is a magic fruit that grows in my land that can help your father." And then she says, oh, "I don't know." She says, "Please, this magic fruit could save your fa family. Please help me." She's kind of playing the playing the card to really convince her, which it's weird how that is, but Rosella says okay. And here we are. So we're finally done eating, so, and we're gonna go to our second house and take some more stuff. And much like the other games, this is all a big collect-a-thon of items and stuff that you need to get. It's typical point adventure, point and click adventure fare. But unlike the uh, previous two games, I mean, we did see the AGD remake of three, but it's a lot of um, the original is the same sort of thing as one and two. Get the items, do the stuff, use them here and there, and what have you. So now we were just captured by the the evil witch Lalo, who. Puts us on some fetch quests and says she needs uh, a couple couple items from the grocery store, so we gotta go out and you know get some stuff for her. Uh, the first thing she needs is, I believe, a unicorn, and then she needs a hen, then she needs Pandora's box. But that's not so late. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, first. the last one's pretty scary, of course, but you know I don't think she does anything with it. Anyways. So we had to get the unicorn first, and of course to do that we had to get put in jail and be told what she wants from us, which also takes time for us to sit here and wait and twiddle our thumbs. Um, um, so after that we have to go and try to get the unicorn, and it's just a series of things to get the items necessary for that. It um, doesn't trust us, it just wanders around, if you get close to it it runs away. Um, so. We're going to be navigating to find those things. Oh, missed it. There we go. And Cupid so, shows up. It's a random chance. He drops his bow when you approach him. Yeah. It took, it took a very long time for some of this RNG stuff. The bow is necessary because, of course, Cupid's bow, when you're shot by it, makes you love whoever shot you by it. So that's one tool we need. Um, there's a little frog right here. We use that ball that we picked up earlier to entice him, and we pick him up, and we pulled a little crown off of his head. 
You can actually kiss him and he would turn into a prince, but that takes too much time. Um, there's a traveling minstrel. Um, he's not very good at what he does. He's playing his lute. He sounds like garbage. So we say, hey, music's not your thing. Here's drama. Then we have uh, Pan who's showing up there. He uh, playing his flute, having fun. You play the lute in front of him. He gets inspired and you trade instruments. And we're going over to this uh, fisherman on the pier and we get to hear this very sorrowful little tune right here because he and his wife are starving because they can't get any, um, they can't seem to catch any fish. So um, Rosella being a good person, um, royalty, they're always good people, gives them the bag of uh, diamonds that he, she got from the dwarves earlier. And then another set of RNG right here where we have to fish for a, a fish using the pole that we got from the fisherman and a worm that we pulled out of the ground. Another bit of RNG right here. Um, a feather will show up on any spot on the beach around this island. And another, two more things of RNG that he just ran into. One is uh, the appearance of a shark, which kills you. It's just a little like gotcha moment. Oh, you're gonna die. Um, we actually need to be swallowed up by a whale. Um, And we have to get out of it to uh, tickle its uvula with the uh, peacock feather we got off of Genesis Island. A lot of this stuff, a lot of these puzzles are all come from fairy tales as well. I'm sure a lot of you can probably pin up, uh, point out which ones are which. Um, little island right there is a series of little puzzles. You have to throw a fish to the pelican. It drops a whistle. You grab the whistle, blow the whistle. A dolphin shows up. You go over behind a front of a boat that's moored, moored there, look down and there's a bridle and you ride the dolphin back and the bridle and Cupid's bow are the two things you need to get the unicorn to bring back to the load. There you go. Now we got our unicorn, we're going back up the mountain. The load's gonna give us our next uh, task over here. Mm -hmm. Get the, uh, the hen that lays golden eggs. But first, we have to get the uh, magic fruit for uh, Graham. Now you would think, hmm, this seems a little out of the way. Later on, we're gonna run into, um, um, we need to have the, we need to have a transition tonight. It, after a certain amount of time, like real life time, you would actually, the time would change tonight, but that is a ridiculously long time. We, I don't even think we've actually fully determined how much it is. I think it's, maybe four plus hours of real life but you get two items and uh, one of them is the magic fruit after a certain point once you get the second one it just transitions to night but um so, so we uh went through a troll cave over here which is a huge rng just mess there's multiple screens where this troll would just come up and just insta give you instagram rosie um, but once we navigate there, we lay a board down, cross the crevice, go, go over the, hop a bunch of, cross a bunch of rocks, um, go over there, play the, uh, uh, snake charmer song for the cobra over there and get the magic fruit. Then we have to navigate our way back out of here. And really the only way to actually get past the, uh, troll, there's no way to, well, there's one, one screen you can actually outrun it, but for the most part, the only way to do it is to just... Got the RNG. And so uh, now that we've gotten out of the, <clears throat> out of there and gone over to the giant's place, or <laughs> the giant, pardon me, let me go back. There's an ogre that lives here, he lives in the big house with his wife and his dog. Uh, we go in there. We have to go in there because he has the golden, golden hen. So the first thing you do is you go in there. Well, first thing you do is you avoid him and his wife. You go in there, you throw a bone to his uh, bulldog, and then you go and hide in the closet and wait for him to come back, which takes about, what, like two minutes and 30 seconds, something like that? Another waiting point. Well, now that uh, we did a little bit of a route change, it only takes a minute now. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> so initially yeah. what we used to do is you, there's a hatchet upstairs, and you grab it, and uh, we always thought, oh, you have to do that first, right? Because at the end, you have to escape. Turns out, no, that actually adds an extra minute. <laughs> Shout out to uh, Santa Claus for finding that one. 
I just want to also say that was a very good uh, cave with the troll. Usually you can get maybe like, you know, 20, 30 trolls that you have to keep restoring, restoring. We only got one. So uh, RNG was very nice to us. Very, very nice. So after waiting for the guy, you peer through the keyhole because you want to wait for him to uh, get his hen, have it lay the egg, and then he falls asleep. And then we do some sneaking around, grab the hen and dart out before he wakes up luckily the game is really forgiving for that so he doesn't just like pop up and reach out and grab you And so that's the second thing we need. Go back to Lolo, and she says, um, I want you to bring me the uh, Pandora's box. There's actually a little line that Rosella mentions. Um, now you see just how evil Lolo really is because she wants, you know, the thing that could release chaos onto the world. Yeah, she's a very, very evil person. Well, fairy. So to get the Pandora's box, the first place we need to go is through this uh, forest right here with these rather inviting and nice looking trees. I'm sure they just give you a big hug if you went up to them. Um, but over here, there's a, <laughs> a witch's hut where there's three blind witches and they have a glass eye that they pass between the three of them. Um, the glass eye allows them to see. And what you have to do is you have to blind them. So how do you do that? You go through, run up to them real quick, snatch the eye as they're passing it by, leave, or as soon as you do that, they just cower, and then you leave, come back, and they throw this charm at you. Charm is a black scarab, which later on, as we see, um, as we transition to night, when we go near that house that we went to in the initial, or the beginning of this big mansion, there's a bunch of zombies in the uh, um, graveyard that's on either side of the other side of it. If you don't have the scarab, they kill you. So it's absolutely necessary to get it. So this section right here, what we need to do is, you may notice that we bought a, uh, or we didn't buy, we got a shovel. The shovel, we need to go and dig up a series of different graves for the people that once lived in this mansion to get the items, these items that they want to uh, put their souls, their spirits at peace, so to speak. Um, first one is a rattle for a baby that lives upstairs. Second one is a bag for a, uh, an old miser. The uh, third is a locket for a fisherman's wife. I believe she's a fisherman's wife, something like that. The fourth is a hero's medal for the baron of the house. And the last is a toy horse for a child, for a young boy. And you can see Shrek going to all the different places. Um, this is a pretty rapid fire little spot. You just like go, if you know how to get to him, you can move to it like real quick back and forth and just grab it and get it done. Uh, one thing that we used to think that you had to do is come in here to trigger which ghost you had to go to, but it turns out you can just kind of go in and go out real quick. Oh, and the Baron's trolling you. Bad Baron. This guy is just so, he's really trolly. He can't be, at least. We kind of have a handful of tricks that we employ to try to make him just come out, but it, it's still pretty much fat chance whether he will or will not. Also a little bit of RNG with the child right there. Sometimes you can get it on a certain frame rule where he just won't even show up right there. Like roll, like run out and then go up the, um, the rope ladder. But, eh, it happened. So, um... Anyways, after we go into that chest in the attic, we find a thing of sheet music. Now, at the top of these stairs, um, and stairs are wonderful in this, uh, you have to, the best way to navigate them is with a mouse. We try using the keyboard. It's a big pain in the butt. Uh, so we get to this big organ, and then we play the sheet music.
a very, very long sequence there, so you gotta pass the time somehow. Yep. Likely Shrek has a really good way of doing that. It's great. Always fun in the streams. So now that we, um, after playing this song, a little drawer opens up. You go in there, you find a skeleton key. You go over to this crypt over here, unlock it, walk in. You have to walk in, grab the rope. Rosie gets pushed out behind the rope when you have to walk forward a couple steps again, you know, because <laughs> this game is Roberta <laughs> sadistic. Yeah, <laughs> um, and then you climb down the rope, a mummy comes out, but because you have the, the scarab, um, it just goes right back into its sarcophagus, and we grab a Pandora's box and go back to Lolo. In fact, I want to say that mummy is like the only reason why we wouldn't just outright skip getting the eye. Well, I think we re have determined that the eye is necessary for time to, or the scarab is necessary for time to go forward. I don't know. We're still working on that. Either way, I don't think you can do <laughs> the mummy. So here's the, uh, another the, waiting section. The scarab. Actually, if you don't have it and you try to enter the haunted house at night, a zombie will come and will eat you before you enter the house. Um, there's oh. a little Easter egg that if you somehow get into the tomb without the scarab, the game actually calls you out on it and says, oh, we don't know how you oh. got in here, but uh, you're going to die anyway because you don't have the scarab. Oh, shoot. Yeah, so that was pretty, uh, pretty funny. I wonder how you can even get in there then because we have not figured out a way to get in there without the scarab. So yeah. The fact that they have the message in there, Makes it seem like there is a way somehow, but we haven't found it yet. It would be fun because eventually we do want to do a low percent, which would take a really long time waiting for water or waiting for um for night. Very, very long. And getting low percent, you have to get as least amount of points as you can. <laughs> it's been interesting. So, anyways, uh, we get put up here in uh, I believe it's Edgar's room, and we have to wait there. We're supposed to be waiting for his um. Uh, you're going to get wed to Mar Edgar, her son. Um, luckily, he comes up, gives us a thing of uh, flowers, which happens to have a key to the door. So then we come over here and play uh, Metal Gear Rosie and sneak about these uh, <laughs> goons. And uh, first thing we got to do is go over here to this cupboard and get our um, our stuff. Uh, luckily, you didn't get the RNG, too, because that goon that's right there by the door, he can actually just straight up wait wake up on a random chance and it really stinks when he does so safety save though yeah. then you get up here to Lolote's room and for some reason it has this overly complicated thing where it purposely asks you whether one use the gold or the skeleton key you can't just type gold key it won't know what you're talking about you have to specifically say gold annoying anyways we get to Lolote and uh an evil fairy, how can you kill her? Well, you shoot her with a Cupid's arrow and it gives her love. Love is the opposite of good and evil. Something, I don't know. It kills her. And now we have to make the mad dash to Janesta. And we're not done yet. We're not out of the woods because we still have to swim across the ocean. And, well, there's a lot of sharks around Kalima. Of course, we get you by a shark immediately. Speak of the devil. <laughs> uh. Time is coming up right now. Once you see the close up of the face, the time. Very nice. Nice run. What was the time on that? So this is the end of the game where we basically just uh, do all this. We've won. Everything's all goody. Vanessa sends us home. We give the fruit back to, to Graham. And uh, we're not going to play through the whole ending. It just takes a, a very long time. But I do want to say that thank you for watching today. I had a lot of fun running this game. I always have a lot of fun running this game. Thank you to uh, Chuck for commentating. Uh, thank mm -hmm. you to all the people who put this together. It's really uh, been a really fun opportunity to uh, showcase the King's Quest collection with uh, all my favorite people. Um, friends and family who are watching, thank you very much. The King's Quest community, you guys are awesome. And uh, that's going to do it for me. Thanks, guys. Final time was uh, 1915, by the way. Was that a PB? Ooh, nice. Good.
No, it's not a PD, but that's that's really good. Aww. That's good though. All righty, and we are back with King's Quest V. I am joined here by Paul. I don't know how to pronounce the other word in your username. Paul. <laughs> Dugan's fine, or just Paul. It's Dugan, okay. okay. I promise. All righty, well, this is a fantastic run. This is probably the first King's Quest game I ever saw, and it's your fault. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry this had to be your first uh, introduction into the series, but this this game does hold a very special place in my heart, and I hope in King's Quest lore in general. It's great and terrible at the same time, as you'll see. All righty, well, whenever you are ready, just give us a countdown and we can get you started. Well, um... What I'm going to do first is there is a is a funky little skip that we found that when we start the game at 18 minutes and 12 seconds, there is just some sort of wacky glitch that happens. Um, to do that, I would have to start the game over again, but I'm not sure if that's even possible, so I'm not going to. So never mind, forget I said any of that. Welcome. But are, you, are you saying it's the glitch of 1812? <laughs> yes, uh, it is colloquially known, at least in my household, as the, the great glitch of 1812 and cannons go off when we achieve it. Um, all right, so we're just going to skip that part, so it's not going to be a terrific time, but... Whatever, we're doing it live. Okay, um, I am ready when you are. Um, time will begin as soon as I click into this menu. Make sure everything's cool. All right, and a three, two, one, go. And this was a waste of time, but Graham, I got stuff. watch out! A poisonous snake! That's for y'all. It would not be a King's Quest V run without it. <sighs> so a lot of this game is just sort of memorizing little bits and bobs of animation to kind of let you know when it's okay to click. Um, with this one, you can hold down the mouse button or enter or whatever button you want, and it will just sort of machine gun those inputs. So it makes transitioning screens or clicking on things super fast, super, super easy. But you also have to be super, super accurate, which I'm not terrific at. And I'm also extremely out of practice. So this is going to be fun for everyone. Sexy D time. Hold on. So we have a lot of downtime here um, in various different parts of the game. The desert is part number one of, I don't know, 700, 800 or so moments of uh, extreme lonely downtime. So this is the desert of despair. Um, not the actual name, but it's what I call it because I hate it. Because it's slow and you can get lost. And if you take one wrong turn, the run is over. I'll let this play too because it's also... Ah. Life-giving water. Nectar of the gods. Iconic. All right, here we are, and here we shall wait. So eventually some bandits are going to run around this corner, go up there, and that will start the rest of the game in motion. A lot of this game is hurry up and wait. Open Sesame! A lot of this game is extremely random as well. Um, not by design, I don't think. Maybe some by design, but some just because the code of this game is held together with string and duct tape. But I love it. I chide, but I love. Stop the nectar, and it's time to play with the bandits. I'm taking things extremely safe. I do have a couple of safety saves ready, uh, just in case I need them, but I prefer not to need them.
I actually feel kind of weird by having to concentrate this hard to remember the route through the desert. <laughs> My memory is extremely poor. Open sesame! Oh no! The staff broke! Excellent, excellent, excellent. The nope. Not excellent. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Not the long walk back to civilization. You can kind of sort of tell where you are if you lose track of counting the screens, which I often do because I'm easily distracted. You just kind of look at the pattern of the rock wall. And can we get in? Are we lined up? Yes. You may. Warning. All right. Now here's one section where we can get good RNG or bad RNG. And we got the worst RNG. With the witch RNG. So depending on where she shows up, she could save you, you know, a little bit of time. But 90% of the time, that's where she's going to show up. She can also show up on this screen we just oh, entered, which is pretty good. Now you spend the next and or the screen up north, which is the best. But well, it's not like I'm exactly going for a world record here. Good. <laughs> good indeed. Do we have the hand icon? Yes, we do. Sometimes the game just likes to sort of change icons or just kind of glitch and try to forget what you were trying to do because uh, this game is extremely trolly and only the maddest of the mad will run it when they're doing. So this King Quest uh, 5 is one of those games where Graham things can be going the great. There's a couple little spots of RNG lock. that can mess with you. But at the very end, it could be all for completely nothing when we get to the RNG castle. Upon opening the leather pouch, Graham discovers three sparkling There's no emeralds. better feeling being on a wonderful, wonderful pace, and then it's getting the worst luck in the world. And then your run's over. <laughs> That's 20 minutes of your life you'll never get back. That's just speedrunning. <laughs> And Loki, my Rocky. favorite character in the game, You're is Rocky. In our way. I love this man. Uh, sorry. Oh, done. Follow me. In here. Warning. All right. Now it's time for probably the worst character in the game, but fortunately her appearance is brief. It. I don't need this old thing anymore. Look at me, I'm a princess again. Herbert! Alicia. Where have you been all this time, my love? Oh, darling, just take me home. I'll tell you on the way. Now... I always forget where the dog is. Over here, somewhere, there he is. <laughs> I'm completely zoned out. This is all completely muscle memory. <laughs> oh no, no, no. All right, y'all. Sing along if you know the words. Let's see. Yeah. 
There we go. Thank you. All right. So all of that was to give me pretty much everything I do for what I call the do-gooder part of the game. Hang on. Let me just kind of whack a cat. Roberta by Roberta. So we have things like a gold needle, which somebody wants, and we have a marionette and shoes, and everybody in town wants something. So I call this uh, Graham's Farewell Serenia Tour because after this is done, we are out of this valley for good. We're not quite done or out of danger yet. Thanks. One cloak, check. You're gonna want this marionette. Here you go. Here the mouse gets wonky, but uh, here he goes, he got it. And then, shoes. Shiz. Here's some shiz. These are the finest. Thanks. <laughs> All right, so I think we have two more things to do. We have to go shopping for pies, uh, and you know exactly why. Most of you do. It's infamous. And then we have to get beat up by uh, innkeepers. And how is your poor dear mother doing, William? Oh, she hasn't been doing too well lately. But my brother and I help out whenever we can. Thanks for asking, Amanda. Austin, keep your fingers out of that pie. Pies look lovely. I think I'll take one. Yes, they were just made fresh this morning. Here you go. Yes, this will be a fine dessert for our dinner tonight. Let's go home, Austin. Here's the last of the pies. Here's the last of the pies. All right. Oh, this bakery's wonky. Did it. All right, it's time to go get beat up. And I learned recently the voice of that guy who just knocked me on the top of the head is Mark Siebert, who is the um, composer of the game. And I also think he was the voice of all the ants that were singing. So, cameos. And this is Roberta, but we never get to hear her voice, which is perfectly fine by me. Come on. And grab some meat, grab the door, and let's grab us some get up and go. Okay, that's it. I think we have done everything we need to do in the Grand Kingdom of Serenia, so now we're gonna, well, I guess this is all Grand Serenia. All right, now it's time to go up into a more dangerous place, so I'm going to be taking this very easy, because it's so very easy to fall off on the mountain and die and your quest is over. So, okay, cloak. Nope. Well, that's awkward. I'm just gonna steer him around. Normally you can just click up there and he'll just kind of do it on his own S sometimes, or sometimes he just kind of goes as the crow flies and will fall off the cliff and it's game over. And then you start all over again. That's what we call safety strats. Slid at the ready. That's my favorite part. Mm. Kill him. Kill the O. Meat for the eagle, that sounds like a condor. This game is full of small little moments that if you just forget to pick up like a blade of grass at the beginning of the game, then at the end of the game, you're in an unwinnable state. I am Queen Isabella, and in 
have entered my domain now, like a man who should kneel before me, since both you and your friend over there have so thoughtlessly invaded my territory without my permission or knowledge, I have decided you shall both be put to death. Take him away, my pet. Music shall soothe the savage beast and also you. All right, pie at the ready. Y'all know what time it is. It's pie time. It's high time for pie time. Splat. Feed us in, Yeti. Okay. Uh. Ugh. There's also a lot of real little and annoying changes between the CD version and the floppy version. Technically, I prefer the floppy version, but what are you gonna do? It doesn't have voices, and the voices add so much charm and, and luster to this game. But the floppy version has like better character portraits and longer animations and all kinds of neat things. It also doesn't have Cedric's voice, which is another gigantic plus, but it also has copyright protection, which makes running the French version of this game a bit more of a challenge, which is its own category. So for those who have actually gone through that and memorized the copy protection, um, can, wow, good. That's amazing, legitimately, because I cannot. Gucci, gucci, goo. Okay, so we're in sort of like the second half of the game, more or less, actually, by the time we got up to the mountains, that's your second half. So we got a boat ride to complete with harpies. <laughs> and a boat that will leak if you don't plug it with beeswax. So here's a fun little trick. So the goal is just make it across the sea, but if you kind of do this zigzaggy thing, whenever you cross screens, you're in the middle of the screen now. So by doing this kind of zigzag thing, you probably save about, I don't know, probably five, four or five seconds maybe? It's bigger than it looks. I do so love seeing Cedric in pain. That's a that's a sentence for out of context. <laughs> Hashtag out of context. Now this is one of the scenes that you know long unskippable scenes that when that eighteen twelve glitch rolls around is really nice to skip, but then the old man skip later on is longer, and you'll see why. And when we first found a way that we could make that skip consistent, thank you, Sluicebox, for finding that, then it's... Uh, whenever it happens, I just get, like, I just get tingles. It's just so great, because it cuts legitimately 30 seconds off the run if you can get it, if you can time it properly. All right. So I gotta take my injured little boy back. See if anybody can get him fixed up. And I know jolly well who's going to do it. It's gonna be old man Caruso. Who talks like this. Okay, you can do like a tiny little zigzag here, but you know, the time save here is minimal. Every little bit, save the frames. All right, old man, let's dance. The amount of time it takes him to answer the door is completely random. That was pretty good. There's lots of little random spots in this game. Just the amount of time it takes this guy to answer the door, random. How long it takes Cassie to rescue you from the dungeon later, random. Um, where are the cat's gonna be in the castle later, random. Is Mordek gonna show up and ruin your day, random. So yeah, and most of this stuff happens later at the castle, which is just, it's RNG hell. It's where good runs go to die. And the reason why only crazy people run this game. <laughs> and there's a lot of us, which is wonderful. Um, well, not a lot of us. It's, it's still a small, tight-knit and wonderful community. But we're all insane. So if we timed it right, this is about where that skip would happen. He would skip this part, and then we'd come over and talk to Graham, and he's talking on his shell phone. <laughs> I just came up with that. Keep it. Um, 
completely lost my train of thought because the Shelton thing was just so brilliant. Uh, anyway, but this would all be skipped and you save 30 seconds and blah, 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 go down the mermaid and boat castle and that's where the run will most likely fizzle out and die. Let's go, Graham. Let's get to the castle. Get up there and save your family. Hurry up and wait is the King's Quest way. This man needs your help. He needs you to lead him to Mordak's Island. It's a real emergency. Mordak's holding his family hostage. Girl can't speak human talk, but she's agreed to help you. Just get on into your boat and call her. her. You don't really realize until you run into a non-speaking character how actually nice it is to have a non-speaking character in a game where people just will not stop yapping. And honestly, because, you know, Cedric is known for being the most annoying person in this game, and, I mean, he 100% is, but we don't really give him an opportunity to talk in this game at all, which is great. Um, but, you know, you do kind of miss him call it Stockholm Syndrome from the original, you know, I haven't planned to play through this about, I don't know, 150, 70 odd, 100, 200 times. All right, we have reached end game. Things can go horribly or things could go great. In my practice yesterday, which is like the only practice I've had in months, it went really, really well, but too bad I was rusty. All right, let's see how much of this I remember. Up there, grab that, boop, beep. And a little bit of never-ending story for you. Now, sadly, this game is not really full of, you know, as tenuously as it is held together by its code, it doesn't have a lot of glitches in it, but this is one, and we call it the Great Skip, because it involves a great, but it's also great. Oh, uh-oh, uh-oh, Grammy. All right, that's kind of sort of what it looks like. All right. Left, right, left, right. I'm so happy I remember my way through this. This is purely muscle memory. Say hi to Dinky. Dinky loves tambourines. <laughs> He's just such a heartwarming character. I really wish he, was, he showed up more in the game, but that's it. No, Dink's here and Dink's gone. Dink said his piece. <laughs> This way, please. All right, this is my least favorite part is, you know, I'm just gonna do this the slow way because I can't, well, okay. Well, now I have no choice but to do it the slow way because I can't click. So much about this castle flummoxes me. Let's grab a bag of peas, talk to Cassie, and then we can really start to get the RNG a flowing. All right. If we're lucky, blue ma the blue guy will show up here. That is probably maybe a 10% chance of that actually happening, and that was the fastest it could possibly happen. So, hooray. Uh, but again, it's hurry up and wait. Let's grab our cheese for later. Peas at the ready. All right. Let's see how long it's going to take for Cassie. Cassie can show up to save you anytime between now and, I don't know, go grab some lunch. She might be there. I think 20 seconds is the max, maybe 30. I don't know. But this, again, you can have the best luck with the blue meanie. Get yourself down here, ASAP. And then Cassie is just here to ruin your day. There you go. There's Cass. Hey. Appreciate you saving me. In we go, and I appreciate you so much. We're going to despawn you because it's faster. All right. I believe I have a safety save, but we're going to go YOLO here and then see... Sometimes he shows up here and it scares me. No, okay. All right, he's not gonna be there. If he's not there, he'll show up here eventually. There he is. All right, that wasn't terrible. 
All right, no kitties, no kitties, no kitties, no kitties. If the cat shows up here, it screws up everything. Yay, no cat. Now will the cat be in the bedroom? He will, first try, first try kitty. I'm so unused to like, things going my way that when things do happen, I get all flummoxed and don't know what I'm doing. Okay. Now, again, this looks interesting. hurry up and wait. What the mean. So we are going to be stuck in this room together, you and I, and all of you, for a good 90 seconds. If the cat did not show up in that bedroom where he did, then we would be stuck in this room for a solid two minutes, um, which I think is roundabout correct. So that's a time save. <laughs> Even though it doesn't look like a lot of time is being saved right now, here we are. Um, so we just kind of make your own fun. Um, I'd like to take Grant, uh, Graham ice skating around the ring. He's become very good at it. I'm very pleased with his progress. He used to fall over, but now smooth as butter. Graham, 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 Graham. Oh, all right. So what'll happen next? Eventually, Mordak's going to show his head through that door. He's going to go take a nap, a little wizard nap. We're going to go and not disrupt his wizard nap and take his magic wand. We're going to take the magic wand. We're going to take it to that magic machine. We're going to charge it. It's Christmas old wand, which you didn't see because that was the intro that we skipped. So we're going to put the cheese in there. <gasps> and then once you put the cheese in there, it's going to activate a machine. The machine's going to go off and charge his uh, our wand and drain his wand. And then we're going to get that. And Mordak's going to show up and say, oh, hey, what's going on? And then Cedric's going to fly in. And Cedric's going to get shot. And everyone's going to cheer. And then that's when Endgame starts and he's going to turn into like a dragon or this like uh, this, uh, thing and uh, that's the end of the game so oh here Mordak's here okay let's put all that plan into action the cheese machine oops all right Put on his wand first. Okay. Go on over here. And then, for reasons yet adequately explained, cheese runs the machine. Sure. Okay. I mean, I've seen Stranger Things in these types of games. This so. <laughs> is hardly surprising. <laughs> oh. When I was a kid, like, because this is one of, the, one of the first games I played enough to have like an effect on my fragile psyche was where I was introduced to the concept of moon logic, which it henceforth has become known as Sierra logic or Roberta logic, um, which are really much the same thing. Um, so once this machine winds down, we're going to grab our wand and I was able to kind of skip some of those sound effects. And if I did that correctly, Mordak should show up right away. There he is. Good. There's a, there's like a 15 second fanfare there that kind of predicates his arrival. And here's my second favorite part of the game. <gasps> Boom. What the? Cedric's dead. What? You think you can... All right. So we can a little bit of careful clicking. El Tigre. There's nothing worse, and it's happened before. Like, if, I, if I'm if i in, like, really good luck, or if I'm on, like, personal best or world record pace, I'll get to this point, and I get so jittery and, and panicked that I'll misclick, and that's it. I've come this far, and it's completely my fault. So I'm just taking my time and selecting the right animals. So, as in, you know, as lore dictates, rabbit always beats dragon. I'll, I'll, I'll get there. This is this part's hard. Mm, there we go. Say goodbye. Oh, I should probably be ready. Okay, mongoose time. Let's do ricky ticky tavy it up. Um, time will be once I click the rain spell and click OK, which will be happening in about five seconds. And time. Excellent. 
Uh, GGs. We made it. We made it. We made it through RNG Hell. And actually, honestly, it didn't go as bad as I was anticipating. If I, if I was actually on, you know, a tra attending a PB, that run would have made me very, very happy. Oh. Well, thank you very, very much. It's I'm very pleased to actually be show off interrupting, rude, to show off King's Quest V to everybody. Um, the King's Quest uh, community at large is wonderful. Um, stay tuned for King's Quest VI, which is a lot more exciting than this game is, and also just a better game in general. It's time for some Alexander Zippin. <laughs> hey, King's Quest VI. King's Quest VI, while wow, talking is hard today, is a, is a fantastic episode. So is five, and thank you so much for uh, showing it off. A ton of fun to watch. Oh. Um, but... Uh, is right. We are going to set up for King's Quest VI, so we're going to take a very short break, and we will see you on the other side uh, for the final two runs of today. Six, followed by Where seven. Where does Cedric land? There he is. <laughs> and hello again, everyone. Uh, I am still Zoe Vermillion. I have not rebranded in the five minutes we were gone. Uh, I am joined by Jackie Joe. Uh, Jackie, how are you doing? Excited. <laughs> I'm really excited too. You uh, really kind of helped me put this together, really kind of uh, the spark for putting on this showcase when you showed this off during Fleet Fatales. So I want to thank you so much uh, for, for making this day awesome. Um, you. But you're here <laughs> to run King's Quest VI, is that right? I am, I am, and I'm really excited because actually the run has changed a lot since I did my run at Flea Fatale, so I'm so excited to show you guys the insanity that is the catacombs now, so get ready. Ooh, <laughs> spicy new tech, awesome. Uh, new well, tech, yep. The floor is yours, count us down whenever you're ready. You got it, so we're now in King's Quest VI, right? So this takes off really right after King's Quest V, and we're gonna be helmed up with Prince Alexander, um, who met Cosima back in that dungeon, right? Um, and he fell in love with her, and now he needs to find her. He looks in a magic mirror and finds she's in this far off land, so he sets sail, and then is there's a huge shipwreck, and he washes up on shore with nothing, nothing. So it's really, really interesting, but the whole game is just basically, I like to affectionately call it the quest for booty in that Alexander is searching for his love for the whole time. And of course, some things get in the way. It's a really, really fast and furious run. I'm gonna try to talk as much as possible while playing. Um, we're gonna hearken back a little bit more towards King's Quest one and two with zips. So it's gonna be a lot more fast paced than what you've previously seen for three, four, and five. So. All right, let's do it. I'm going to go ahead and count down. Uh, we'll go in three, two, one, go. All right. So the first bit of tech you will see are the zips. So here's one, there's two, and another. <laughs> right? So like I said, it's a little fast, right? Okay. Sorry, it's really hard to talk and play this game at the same time. I'm gonna do my best. These zips are fascinating. They basically, no! They basically um, work because he's walking at a diagonal and his speed is um, completely uh, unthrottled. So it's using the speed of my CPU, which is clearly better than a 1992 computer's CPU. Um, so it's it's gonna go for fast. <laughs> so there's certain things that won't run at this unclocked speed, and you will see that. Uh, the difficulty of this run really comes in uh, making sure whew, you are hitting as many of these zips as possible. Basically, any of these little zips that I miss, I'm losing seconds upon seconds, and it adds up. Um, so anytime you see me like walk slowly, that probably wasn't supposed to happen, and I made a mistake. <laughs> Hokey dokey. So we are coming up on uh, the first uh, glitch that's really, really neat. That's called Gnome Skip. There's usually a whole bunch of gnomes that you need to get past. Um, so we're going to fly right past them. I'm basically going to do it and then I'll explain kind of how it works. There we go. I hope I hit the trigger. I think I did. Yep. Good. Alrighty. So that was Gnome Skip. So it doesn't look like much, except it looks really cool, right? But what we did is we skipped the gnomes sequence. So if you remember, there's like this set of sense gnomes. You have to get a whole bunch of items to like get past them. And they're just like, you know, a barrier blocking you from the rest of the island. So what we do is we uh, catch him in the middle of a turn. 
Um, and while he's in that turning animation, we open up the map, which overrides uh, the room script. And since one room script is running, it can't run the other room script, which is the gnomes coming in. So the gnomes just get totally skipped. So that's fun. Get off. <laughs> See, like that was a mistake. Um, so yeah. <laughs> So we just completely go past them. Now, if I were to walk north again, the gnomes would show up. So you can only do that once. <laughs> well, you can do it over and over, but you would literally have to do it over and over. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and yeet this iceberg real quick and then get out of here. <laughs> we'll come back to this island later. I love that part. We just come there, throw the lettuce and get out. All right, great. Whew. We are making progress. <laughs> it's really fast, huh? So now we're gonna go and climb the Cliffs of Logic, which I like to affectionately call the Cliffs of Copyright Protection, because this is how they did uh, copyright protection back in the day. Uh, this game originally came out on 11 floppy disks. Later came out on CD-ROM as well. Um, but the developers were very worried that people would copy the floppy and then give it to somebody else um, and pirate the game, right? So they don't want that to happen. Um, so what they did is they created this level of the game, the Cliffs of Logic, and there are little puzzles along the way. Um, and the answers to these puzzles clearly are not on this screen. Um, they are all on the guidebook to the land of the Green Isles that uh, you get when you legally purchase the game. And if you didn't have that guidebook, you couldn't figure out the answers and you'd be super screwed right um so yeah <laughs> so this part of the speed run is like super tedious um but you also cannot lose focus because if you do one little step wrong uh you will fall to your death because good old king's quest you you know kind of constantly die <laughs> in all different kinds of ways which uh i should mention there's a really great uh kind of uh, alternative category to this game that's called All Deaths, where we go through and get all of the unique death messages, of which I believe there are 35. Um, and it's just such a blast. Uh, I think we're, we're actually doing an All Deaths race next weekend uh, on uh, Friday night, Saturday night, Saturday night, I think. Um, and that is just gonna be such a blast. It's always great hanging out with my crew. What? I must have clicked one pixel not on that thing. <laughs> That's fine. Marathon luck, right? Um, but yeah, it's super fun. This community is great. Um, I kind of de facto like started this community. About, it was almost six years ago now, actually, when I started running this game. There was only one other runner when I started running. His name is Bill Bull, um, really, really great guy. Um, and then I started running this game and uh, a year or two later, you know, Discord became a thing. So I made a King's Quest speedrunning Discord and it went from like just me and like a couple of friends that I goaded into joining it um, and got all the way to now we have like, I don't know how many people we have like 90 people, I think in our Discord now. And we have dozens of active runners. So it's just like, it's so cool every day just to see all the people in the community um, when, you know, when I first started running this game, there was like nobody and there's no community. And now it's like anybody that wants to try to run these games can just, you know, ask for any help they want. It's lovely. Oh, getting myself all teary eyed. Okay, so let's focus back on the run. Now that we're done with the cliffs. Um, so the next part here, um, we're gonna do the catacombs or as we affectionately call them in the community, the cat attack bombs. Because one of the runners, hold on, let me focus one sec. Oh, I keep missing that zip and I don't understand why. Anyway, I practiced it too. Anywho, um, so the cat attack bombs um, are super fun because it is just a giant maze. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do a huge, um, we're doing, gonna do a glitch. It's very similar to gnome skip where we're opening an item and overriding a type of room script. Except what we're gonna do is we're gonna open this really boring book that I grabbed at the beginning. And instead of a normal, uh, instead of the map screen transition, it's now going to be, um, uh, uh, I'm sorry, instead of the maze screen transition, it's going to be a normal screen transition, which just kind of bugs out the game and makes it go somewhere you're not supposed to in the maze. And the fun fact is that inside of this maze, it's like all on one, um, it's like the programmers put it all in one map. So upstairs is here and downstairs is here. So we're able to basically like go from upstairs to downstairs without doing any of the stuff we're supposed to do. Now I'm gonna not talk because this is actually really hard. Oh, shoot. Okay, 
I'm pressing Alt here just to skip the maze. That's very silly. Okay. Oof. Oh, come on. Oops. Nope, not gonna work. There we go. Okay, <laughs> I missed a lot of zips there. I'm really nervous. <laughs> so now we're gonna go through, we're gonna go actually down here to here. <laughs> and now we're downstairs. <laughs> and now we are going to zip, 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 zip. Oh, get over there. That was weird. Now we're going to go up here. And you'll see his little feet. <laughs> Those little feeties. So we're going through that wall into a null room. This is a null room. Um, and then we're going to do it again. Oops. And we're going to go again north into um, what isn't a null room this time is where we want to go. And if you remember, the whole point of this is to get to the Minotaur. I know we're at the Minotaur. So that's the really cool new tech that we have um, since I did my Fleet Fatales run. Um, really fun, isn't it, guys? <laughs> I love that. This, this speedrun has come so far. Like, when I, when I did it six years ago, it was literally just... Like, I didn't even know what zips were, and I wasn't even doing them intentionally. They would just happen sometimes, and I called them weird fast walks. <laughs> I clearly am very bad with computer programming because I had no idea. Um, and then, you know, we got some more knowledgeable people to run this game, and now this speedrun is just, like, super optimized and really, really fun and challenging, and, you know, I, I never get bored of running it six years. <laughs> Um, I looked at my live split the other day and I think, and I have done over a thousand uh, speedrun attempts. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? you think I'd be better, right? <laughs> Just kidding. All right, so we're gonna head into the back end of this run, right? Um, and so we're gonna go to the Isle of the Mist and then we're gonna do, we're doing the short path. Um, so there's like two ways to kind of complete this game. There's the long path where you go to the Isle of, sorry, the, the, the Isle, Isle of the Dead, is that what it's called? <laughs> the Underworld. Um, and then there is the, so, from the east. Oh, bad RNG. Um, and then there's a short path where you um, just wear beauty's clothes to get into the castle, right? Oops. <laughs> that was weird. Like I said, I'm real nervous. <laughs> okay, there we go. So we're gonna get past this archer. That was why we had to grab the shield. It's actually the only useful thing we needed to get from the catacombs. It's kind of fascinating, isn't it? It's like you need all these items to progress through the catacombs. We just skip it. So you'll notice like the hole in the wall, like my awesome t-shirt. Yeah, we never get that in this run because he's just not necessary anymore because we just skip, we just skip it. <laughs> Sorry, hole in the wall. He is really, really funny and cute though. If you play this game casually, he's probably like my favorite. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna go back. You're gonna see a funny cutscene here. And this is an effect of gnome skip. And it's very confusing. And I don't know that I have the time to like explain why that works um, and why that cutscene shows up now when it didn't show up before, but it's just kind of weird. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it has to do with like, let me see, maybe I can explain it. So like when you do gnome skip, you're actually affecting what act the game is in and the game's separate into different acts and like, um, like act one through five, like a play kind of. And depending what act you're in, different like cutscenes will appear and you're able to do different stuff like as the story progresses. Um, like for example, after we get Beauty's um, dress here, we're gonna go to the castle. And typically there's like all these handmaidens walking into the castle and Alex dresses as Beauty so he can sneak in with the handmaidens. Um, but you don't see those handmaidens here because we are in act four instead of act five. So it's extra hilarious that he's able to sneak into the castle with a dress when there are no other handmaidens. <laughs> So you'll watch and we'll just put on the dress and we're just gonna waltz in and it's gonna make no sense. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Don't mind me. <laughs> That's silly. All right, cool. So we're getting into the end, right? Um, this part is really technical. There's a lot of like really quick stuff and a bunch of zips in here. Uh, I really, really hate the castle now. Um, I used to always hate catacombs the most, but now the catacombs is a little bit easier. Um, I really, really hate the castle. 
feel like I make the most mis mistakes during this split. Okay, here we go. Fun fact about these guard, they're guard dogs, it's cute, right? Um, fun fact about them is their, um, their cycle here is actually on RNG. Um, now the chance of getting bad RNG is like 1% or less. Okay, now I'm finding an exact pixel here, which is why I'm leaning really, really into my computer. Um, there it is, okay. And that's because um, I play in windowed mode. It makes it a lot easier for me. Um, it's so hard to talk during this. Nice zip. <laughs> Alexander finds the okay. Whew. There we go. <laughs> Sorry, I don't even remember what I was saying before. It is so hard to do this run and talk. <laughs> okay, there we go. So now we're past that, um, but yeah, so I play in windowed mode um, and that's just because it makes it a lot easier to like shoot your mouse across the screen when it's on a smaller like playing field. Um, like if you played this in full screen, um, it, you know, you'd have to move your, physically move your mouse farther. Um, so I find that it's really easy. I also use like a mouse um, with like a higher sensitivity so you can see like how quickly it kind of moves. It actually has a higher level of sensitivity, but I tried to do it with that one so it was just like, it was too much, it was too fast. <laughs> I almost got salad into there. <laughs> I had a safety save just in case for that, but we're fine. All right, great. Oof. There we go, we're gonna show the mirror because that is not actually Cosima, that is the genie. Boop, 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 boop. Now we're gonna use this mint. So the fun thing about this mint, we grabbed this at the very beginning of the game from Pawn Shop, right? Now, when you play this game casually, you should never have this mint at the end. You're supposed to have a peppermint that you grab at a different place. But the programmers made it work. So that way the mint you get at the beginning, you would never have at the end, actually works. Isn't that fascinating? So we're able to skip the peppermint. Um, another cool fact, right after I hit my sword on Alhazred here, it's exactly 40 seconds until the end of the run. So here's your call out that the time will be when I finally hit Alhazred um, with my sword. I'll try to count it down because it's be a little confusing. Um, another fun thing is that it is uh, infamous in, in our community that one time when I was playing this game, I was about to PB by a lot and uh, I got distracted because I was so excited and I did not hit the final hit on El Hazard, and I lost the run. So that's called pulling a Jackie. All right, time is coming up here really soon in like three, two, one, that's time. And that's it. <laughs> it's so fast, huh? What was wow. my time, chat? <laughs> that felt decently okay. I had a bad catacombs though. Right? Yeah, you had a 14.45. Oh, that's not that bad, okay. <laughs> I thought it was way worse. My PB is 14.14. Right now, the uh, world record is 13.49 by Top Keck Shrek, who you guys saw do uh, King's Quest 4. He is amazing at these games. Like, you know, to toot his horn, I have really only ever run six, um, although I'm going to learn some of the other ones. Um, but he's just like a jack of all trades and he runs a ton of these runs. So it's so impressive. So thank you guys. Um, so now we're going to, uh, we're going through this wedding real quick, right? Um, and uh, so we can get to the song. <laughs> it's a very sad wedding in this any percent, nobody comes. Well, Jalo comes, even though we never meet him, we never say anything to Jalo, but he still comes to our wedding. It's kind of nice. Maybe he came for Cosima. <laughs> the guard dogs come. <laughs> anyway, so we're gonna sing the song. The song is amazing. Um, and the song is so great because <laughs> they released it alongside this game. It's called Girl in the Tower. It's the most 90s game ever, I mean, 90s song ever. Um, and it's excellent because it's just so 90s. <laughs> you ready? Let's go. You seem so far away. Oh, and I just need to hear your voice. Oh yeah, I know you know the words, chat. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, it's so good. I just need to hear you say If you would have me go or stay Oh, oh, oh. oh it's so good. <laughs> Girl in the tower, I'm reaching out. Please tell me what to do. Girl in the tower, oh, I'm calling out. My heart 
cries out for you. So it's tradition for me to sing this when I PB. Um, so that's why I know all of the words. <laughs> I saw your face. And I felt our souls embrace. That's my favorite line. <laughs> so corny, I can't. <laughs> if it's not meant to be this way, why do you haunt me night and day? <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Girl in the tower, I'm a reaching out. Please tell me what to do. Here in the tower, I'm calling out. My heart cries out for you. <laughs> so your other fun fact about this song is when they released it, they encouraged people who bought the game to call into their radio station to request them to play it. And finally, radio stations would like, we're talking to Sierra and saying, can you please stop? Please stop having these people call in. We're not gonna play this song. <laughs> oh, I just love that. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> you ready? Girl in the tower, I'm reaching out. Bring it back. One more time, chorus. Girl in the tower, I'm reaching out. Please tell me what to do. Here in the tower, I'm calling out. My heart cries out for you. Oh, girl in the tower. Let me have guitar solo. Mm. Here in my tower. <laughs> and then we have to dot the I. Sick guitar solo, isn't it great? <laughs> So there you go, that is King's Quest VI. I uh, thank you so much for letting me participate. I will do the first shout out of the, of the day, by the way, for our King's Quest speedrunning Discord. If you are interested in speedrunning any King's Quest game, even a fan game or the new game or Mask of Eternity even, um, please join us. You can find a link to our Discord on the speedrot.com leaderboards. Every single game, there's a link to our Discord. Please join us, I love you guys. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you so much, Jackie. I also just dropped the link to the Discord in chat. So if anyone's great. interested, please awesome. join. This is a great community. It Tons is. Of great people. It's been fantastic working with y'all. This has been a, a pleasure. Uh, but we do have one more run. Uh, we're going to get set up here for King's Quest Seven: The Princeless Bride, uh, run by uh, Jam Evil. Uh, so hang tight, people, and we will uh, send this show off with a bang. Yay! And hello, hello, we are back. We have our final run for the day. It's hard to believe that King's Quest 1 through 6 have come and gone, but we have King's Quest 7 here, the longest of the bunch, as according <laughs> to the estimates. Um, and we have the fantastic uh, GM Mabel here to run it, and Chuck Grody back on at commentary. How are you two doing? Hi, very well, thank you. Yes, glad to be here. Oh, wow. Great, great, love to hear that. Uh, so yeah, King's Quest Seven. Yes, like you said, the longest one of the bunch, but uh, it's uh, pumping with action all the way through. Uh, this game has a lot of speed run strats. Chuck Rode is the world record holder, so he's very knowledgeable about everything. Uh, he's gonna probably go into detail about some of the stuff that I'm not gonna have the opportunity or the time to do because I am going to be spamming the plus button and mouse buttons all the time. So we're just gonna start a new game here. First off. Uh, yeah, GDQ is the name. It's going to be for good luck. 
Uh, we get to select our chapter. I wish we could just go to six and just finish the game. We'd be done in, what, like five minutes, not even? Uh, but we're, this is like an all chapters run, so we'll start from the beginning. So we'll do uh, start time in five, four, three, two, one, go. So this is like it's a chapter based, right? A uh, little different than the other uh, King's Quest, like a story it's telling, and it switches back and forth between the two protagonists, Valenice, Queen of Daventry, and Rosella, the princess. Uh, yeah, so it's much like uh, King's Quest IV, that you get to play as um, Rosella, but this one gives you the option of Valenice. Ooh, I got a chance at the skip here. Let's see. Oh, I did not get it. Too bad. Yeah, it's whatever. First things first, picking up some salt, checking out the, uh, the statue here. Statue had, oh, I'm in glitch state. I don't know why. I am in a glitch state right now. Um, oh, probably from the tests. It, yeah. This is what you get for naming your, uh, the run GDQ that never goes well. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if you want to explain a little bit more about the glitch state while I go through the motions here. Sorry about that, I was muted. Hey, we got Sorry. Chuck back. Yeah, hey. Hey, hey, Chuck. <laughs> Sorry, uh, then, uh, Chuck's gonna explain a little cool. bit about the glitch state. He started to, but then we realized that he uh, he was muted. But he's, he's here now, he's here, it's good. Marathon glitch luck. State. Yeah. So glitch state. Um, the game has a weird thing where if you start at a later, or a later chapter and you go back to the original chapters, there's registers in the memory um, that for some, it that you've done these puzzles and the puzzles get just shump, jump, um, shuffled for some reason. We don't know why. Um, the game, although very beautiful, it has this nice Don Bluth um, art style that's very reminiscent of um, Disney movies. Um, is very, very, very glitchy. <laughs> the programming in it is just kind of put together. Uh, the shoestring glue is a nice way to put it. I'd say this is just yeah. like <laughs> taped together. Like the cheapest you know, tape and, you could find. And this is the best patched version that you can get. Like, there, yeah. there's, <laughs> there are <laughs> far worse versions out there than this one. Uh, yes, but this is. one works. It's... This still has its quirks. We'll see in chapter four. Or is it five? Five, we'll see, uh, with the firecracker. That's that's for certain. That's going to be fun. Right here, we have a, a scorpion that we run from. One of my favorite puzzles in the game here. Uh, this introduces like a new like scene in scene kind of mechanic where your mouse kind of moves differently uh you can actually get oh yep we got the glitch the glitch yeah, state gonna... puzzle that's right <laughs> actually saves a couple seconds it's yeah right cool. i'll take it uh since we were in that glitch state that puzzle was like halfway solved already i only had to put one gem on the statue instead of all three which We'll take it, but it, like I said, this is not going to be a uh, a counted speed run. So if it's like a PB or a, a world record, it doesn't count just because of the glitch state. Hey, if anything, it's showcasing it. So there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah fortunately, uh, you would think like right there. Hey, if the puzzles are shorter and they're better than that, and they're like easier to solve why not just put run the game always in the glitch state well we've determined i actually helped someone on a, a casual stream with this um chapter five can be a little weird with the glitch state um sometimes it becomes you can't even finish it we don't it's just we hope sometimes that this stuff just doesn't break <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have uh, a few safety saves, so if it does, we'll 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 make it work. I could always we'll start make... a new one at chapter five too, which wouldn't be too bad. Totally. Oh, become an IL world record. 
right there we go oh Going well slow. now we're on to chapter two and this is uh the most tech heavy chapter of the bunch um you're gonna start seeing some interesting stuff coming up and i'll probably get into it once uh jam actually does it yeah we're gonna be doing then. zips and clips and and optimized uh movements in many places there's the uh what is it the updraft skip which has recently been mm -hmm. found by chuck Rody. uh that really helps saves a few seconds saves an animation or two uh, this is definitely one of the more like you said speed tech uh heavy areas chapters, chapters yeah yeah well but a lot of it is really just uh, navigating this like hub area right here um and getting a bunch of items so in the story uh rosella fell into this pond while talking to her mom she followed like a um uh what was it like a a hummingbird into a pond pretty much like an alice in wonderland sort of story it's and like a dragon fairy yeah yeah and then she gets pulled through and she's like in a big vortex she gets pulled through the wall into this uh land of the trolls and she herself as she enters it becomes a troll and this is so the first First part of it is for her to try and uh, get a cure for that. A cure, quote unquote, it's mostly just like a mixture of items that kind of fixes her. Uh, yep, and some of those items uh, include like a, a gold bowl, which we already have, uh, a dragon scale, which we're going to work towards, uh, some emerald water, which we just picked up, a silver spoon, and my favorite, of course, the baked beetles. Those baked beetles. Baked the beetles. Delicious. So we're going to come up to the first bit of um, speed tech right here is what we call the fast spoon. So there's a weird mechanic in this game where certain animations are tied to other animations that are going on in the background. As you can see, there's uh, quite a few. There's a guy on the left that's hitting a hammer and a chisel. There's the guy that's you hitting the anvil. Um, if you hit... Got it. Oh, we got it. That's Close, yeah, I still got it. <laughs> still got it. So the, the animation of him taking the uh, the box with the tongs and putting it in the water is tied to the animation of the fire fading. So the closer you get to the fire fading further down, the faster that animation will be. First so really, there we go. It's a bit tied. And uh, yeah. So that zip right there is kind of like a thing that's just more of like a programming oversight. And... If you go from any room to that one, you can kind of like do zip on it if you're clicking on the hitbox. And uh, <laughs> I'm still a couple seconds behind in the thing, so. Um, yeah. uh, you saw the first out of bounds right there. So uh, I kind of stumbled upon that. Well, technically I didn't. This dude named, I think his name Julian Rico. Yes, Julian he stumbled Rico, upon yes. A, he, ran upon, he stumbled upon it ages ago. He didn't know exactly what it was. Ooh, hello. What was that? What was what? When you got the spark, or you gave this? I didn't even notice. Uh, <laughs> no, what happened? Yeah, it was a lot faster, I think. Oh, I'll take it. Glitch state. Call it glitch state. Interesting. Hey, we find something know. new every day. Anyways, um, so what the out of bounds thing is, um, when you move, there's a bunch of different paths that Rosella can take in certain. Um, areas and if you slow the game down you put you just mash the heck out of the mouse buttons it just kind of overloads and eventually she'll just take one that's just like whatever's closest to her you're kind of like hitting it on every step and every frame as she going and sometimes some of them are just glitchy so I took this painstaking amount of time to actually just route these ones in and yeah it was interesting I actually ran through the whole game with a macro and it turns out you could actually just like move the character move Rosella or Valenice anywhere on the screen yeah there's clips everywhere but the only ones that have been that have been found to be useful have been in this chapter unfortunately there's a handful yeah. of other ones like maybe one or two later yeah. on but they're minor time saves if you can get them oh well yeah, it's an interesting thing. When I found that, that really opened my eyes to this game. I was like, ooh, potential. All right, now we have all the ingredients. Hand them in, hand them in to Matilda. This is, uh, you got a tight little window here to give these ingredients to Matilda. Or otherwise, the uh, screen will go away like that. And you'll have to start the animation over again. I did miss one. Uh, Chalk it up to talking, but that's all right. Not a big deal. This is one of those things also... 
But it's one of those things that's also kind of tied to your CPU speed. If you have a slower CPU, you might have a bit of an edge in this regard, but a faster CPU might not. It's a problem with these DOS games and you really can't do anything about it. Vari yeah, variable yeah. hardware speeds is just what it is. It's no, limited to... mostly with DOSBox, but uh, yeah, you can still have m minor inconsistencies and uh, speed, speed differences, yeah. But it's mostly standardized, I'd say, at this point. At this point, yeah. Totally. Uh, running this game at a, really. fi at a fixed rate, like uh, 10,000 cycles or something, uh, disallows some of the speed tech to be used. Oh, anything less than that, you're just cursed all percent. Yeah, it's a, it's a, <laughs> it's a slow <laughs> run at that point. Okay, this is the most important zip in the game here. This is the militia skip. Uh, we're gonna go into the uh, menu, make a new bookmark, and try to zip over to the right like we did the p previous two times. Um, and this good saves luck, a man. good chunk of time. Thanks. Nope, we did not get it. That's okay. Aww. Now we just have to go through this animation, and we'll use this rat. I've been super consistent on that lately. I can't believe I did miss it. Marathon luck, man. That's all right. It's a funny so little by, cut scene. By uh, opening the menu and closing it and making a bookmark, you can actually just hit for fast enough, just hit escape and hit escape again. And then what that does is pretty much to simulate like a, uh, a transition, which allows you to do the zip into the troll cave. The weird thing. All right. We are done with chapter two. This is the last click. And now we're on to the easy chapter. Yes, this one is a lot of running back and forth. It is quite literally you like... You, <laughs> it's yes. the typical, like, just from start to finish, you just play it through fast. Easy I almost hit quit. <laughs> Excuse oh, me, that no. wouldn't have been good. <laughs> that wouldn't have been good, yeah. <laughs> All right. This monster just wants some fruit. Give him the cactus fruit. I think this is also when you start to see um, the animation budget drop. You see things moving at a very, very, very slow frame rate. Yeah, it drops off in chapter, chapter three. That's <laughs> as far as they got. <laughs> no, the rest, it, the rest is pretty good. But yeah, it does. There a few, you know, a few more frames of animation would do this game a lot of good. It would. It <laughs> would like a lot. You want to talk about that actually? Like why the animation got so messed up? Well, the lore is uh, it's unconfirmed 100 percent, but uh, animation development switched company hands a few times, and each one had a different style and different budget, and it traveled around four or five times for different chapters, and eventually came back to Sierra, and they finished it up. But uh, I'm not sure if that's 100 percent accurate, it's but that would make story. sense. A lot of these chapters are different than other ones, so. It, it's a funny enough story, you can almost kind of see it, especially in the later chapters. Yeah, being a late game in Sierra's, uh, like, timeline, they didn't really, they weren't really around too much longer after Kings West 7 came out. They, no. they, pub they, they became a publishing company more so than a uh, development company at that point. Like, the, the, the Indiana Jones games were LucasArts, right? I believe so, yeah. 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 The LucasArt kind of took over the point-and-click adventure game. This is Frankie Bones, by the way. He came to say hi. Say hello, Frankie hello. Bones. I love you, too. <laughs> That's a good cat. He comes for kisses every once in a while. This is my stream kitty. If we're really lucky, we'll see him jump on the back of my chair here in a moment. There's actually one small, small little RNG thing that you can kind of get here with um, pulling that cloth off of the nightingale. Um, oh yeah, that's tied. The animations are tied to each other for the salesman yeah. and the uh, the cover. So if you click on the cover at the right time while the salesman's animation's going off, you'll uh, you'll throw that cover down super fast. Mm -hmm. Just trying to pull yeah, on it. Oh, 
No, really? I didn't even know. <laughs> oh, nice. He, yeah, he does that. Frankie does that. No. That's awesome. Job, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how so that's cool. how intense this speed run is. I could have a cat running all over me and I wouldn't even notice. Thanks for letting me know everybody. <laughs> but it's a it's a fun speed run. Uh, before I picked this up, nobody had run it seriously or routed it seriously. So this was like my first passion like project, like route a game, King's Quest Seven, and uh, I didn't even think sub hour was going to be possible. And Chuck Grody has pulled it down to times that are like almost sub fifty now. So. Yeah. Big advancements, and yeah, the, the the I think the only thing holding us back now is that we've done it so much that we're not looking for new stuff as much, and I think a lot of uh, help could, uh, a lot more things could be found out there if we had everybody's help. So if other people are interested in this game, feel free to reach out to me, send me a whisper, uh, join the Discord, and uh, let's get it let's get it rocking. King's Quest Seven Revival. And if anybody knows how to read SCI2 code, and you can if with uh, using programs like SCI Companion, you can literally just decompile them. Um, if you can make heads or tails of that stuff, we'd be so happy. There's a lot of potential so. for this game. Um, I found, I stumbled upon one crazy thing with uh, the glitch state and um, loading to chapter six, then loading into chapter one, it causes this big glitch. Um, I would have liked to have shown it to you guys, but it's so inconsistent, it's not worth the time. I mean, it's worth the time to see, just not worth the time to try to execute it. All right, making a few trades here, getting a few things like a rubber chicken and a book. The book we need, uh, we need to trade this all the way to the mouse in chapter one, so we have to make our way back there. I don't feel like scrolling, so I'm just gonna wiggle the screen a little bit here. <laughs> <laughs> Lazy strats, still fast. Uh, there is a way to turn off scrolling in this game, um, but going into the menu and turning it off might lose you more time than you would save by not having it on. It, it would. I tested that. It's pretty yeah. much equal with scrolling or no scrolling. There's no new out of bounds or anything. Unfortunately, I was hopeful. Yeah, you do move, I think, faster with the scrolling off overall, but it's not Ooh. enough to, yeah, yeah, to make it worth it. All right, now the big run. I'm gonna run off screen here. Hopefully uh, not run down a screen like I have been doing in practice. <laughs> Did you mention about the jackalope? Uh, no. What, no, we did, we we were having audio issues then we talked about glitch state at that point. Oh yeah, so the jackalope, if you get too close to his hole, he'll uh, blow a raspberry at you. Um, you can avoid him by just like clicking in certain spots and keeping Balinese away from the trigger points. Um, initially, we thought that you pretty much had to get a raspberry and that was that, but it was um, a runner named Urquan that kind of stumbled upon that, I think, or was it me? I don't remember. It was no, Jack, us. no jackalope dare give Urquan the raspberry. <laughs> the mighty Urquan. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, no, it's such a great strat saves uh, a few seconds uh, like four or five seconds that animation is very slow as all are uh, in this game mostly yep. those slow subframe ones are just all like... right so We're almost done this... with chapter three yeah this cheese landed in the pool everyone thinks it's the moon you obviously know it's cheese so you're like oh look at this cheese and they're like no you stole the moon you're under arrest On to chapter Back to four, to, to the land of Ooga Booga. Very nightmare, yes. nightmare before Christmas looking place. Uh, and this was around the same time as Nightmare Before Christmas, if I'm not uh, mistaken, where Halloween chic became uh, kind of popular in the early 90s. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now we go and talk to, uh, do you know this guy's name? Or is he just like the grave digger? Grave digger. Grave the digger. grave digger yeah so we got to talk to the grave digger and uh, as i mentioned earlier his animations are uh well yeah quite slow but let's put it this way you may be hearing it i'm not sure but uh jam's mashing the heck out of his uh mouse both <laughs> buttons i believe and uh yep. it's quite taxing on your hands 
I mean, if you were concerned with the longevity of your wrist and uh, your <laughs> nerve tendon there, you probably wouldn't run this game. But oh no. This You're right here, it's pretty nice. It gives you a, uh, gives you a break. Yeah, I, I still mash during all of that. <laughs> so <laughs> I just keep the Sometimes, rhythm going pretty much the whole time. Exactly. That's pro right, for, strats though. First bit of RNG here, the pumpkin. Uh, we got it first try. Uh, when you have to leave screen and come back on, there's a 50-50 chance of that uh, little lift being there or not. We got it. We got lucky and got it first try. We'll take it. All right. But I think the okay. worst I've had is like seven without getting it. I thought you got 12. It may be, I don't even remember. Yeah, there's a, there's a clip on my channel of of me going crazy over pumpkin, so. I, I remember that one, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. It happens. So this one is, this chapter is a lot of uh, the same sort of thing. Collect some items, do some stuff here and there, deal with, um, uh, actually I should point it out. This is the first chapter with a significant amount of RNG. Yes, that first was the being, first bit. Yeah. First being pumpkin. Pumpkin, and then we have uh, boogie, boogie down. We have there's a stick, a branch. Yeah, uh, we're gonna have to hope that, that they're talking about right now. I hope that is uh, pointing down. If it's pointing up, that means you have to leave the screen and come back until it's pointing down. 50 50 chance again. And then later on, a dog. 50 50 chance. Same thing, same concept. Mm -hmm. So. Fun little bits of RNG to make the run spicy. Yeah, it's spicy it gets. <laughs> so spicy. <laughs> There's a cat in the butt. There's Frankie Bones. He made it onto stream in the game. Good job, Frankie. He is a ninja. Chat was right. <laughs> <laughs> Frankie Post was added to commentary. Awesome. That's awesome. Frankie Bones, you're famous. The people love you. He was, he was taking a nap. He looked up at me. Oh, wrong way. <laughs> we're going to reveal it. We're going to reveal the doggo yet. That was a, bo a boogie down manip. Oh, it didn't work. We needed to check the code. Yeah. The code that we need later. There we go. See, second try. That that would have been up for like five or six screens if we didn't do that. So. Oh, you got that yesterday. That was Wait, terrible. What? Uh, that's boogie down, is not. It is. Uh, that just happens sometimes. Okay. RNG. All right. I'm that was... <laughs> hey, I said I wanted it to happen, and it did happen, and uh, I get to say it on GDQ for my first time ever. But uh, that's never happened to me before. Nope. <laughs> Mark your bingo cards. Yeah. <laughs> Wish granted. That's awesome. Excellent. It's all, all part of the minute? All part of it. Okay, so littered around Ooga Booga, where, where those uh, three symbols, skull, bat, spider, in that order. And finally, you get to plug them into something, which is nice. Nice little touch. We find the true the true troll king because um, in the troll kingdom there's an imposter. Imposter, you say? And now we meet him and we get quite uh, up close and personal with him. Yes, you know this is the real troll king because the real troll king has purple eyes while the imposter has green eyes. He also sounds more like a like a king or gruff. He does. The other guy sounds a bit like a wimp. We'll find out why. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I gave the Troll King his old dragon toad. Uh, he had a little thing, little magic thing in his bracelet that revived the dragon toad so they can get out of the coffin. So we do. And now we're free. But now everybody is chasing after us, so we have to disguise ourselves. Especially Boogie. And uh, Boogie is important. It's important that we do this because... Um, Boogie will show up on each screen after I don't know you know exactly how much time but he just he pops up and you get a small window to run away from him um, we're dressed like one of the characters you may have saw her to the west of uh, Mort Cadaver's place but nobody messes with her uh, no Lady Tepish so like Lady Tepish 
if he messes with her. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! <gasps> That's never happened before. That's a new one. <laughs> That's a new <laughs> okay! <laughs> well, heck, if nobody ever runs this, at least we're finding new stuff by running it on GDQ. <laughs> uh, yeah, and you know that that animation has no legs. Yep. It's awesome. Wow. <laughs> That's two! Three! That's and two. they kicked me off the stream, so let's not, <laughs> let's not make that happen. <laughs> Let's hope something like the volcano doesn't explode or something. Yeah. Oh, sorry, <laughs> Man, glitch state's the way to go. This is pretty cool, yeah. We should do some glitch state runs, make a category. I'm okay Play with that. Care. Miss category. I'm, I'm down. Well, if glitch state's a new category, then, you know, and this is the first submitted run. Does that got mean? got a free world record. Does that mean? <laughs> History is I mean, being made today? I mean, if you... That would be a PB, and Shrek would have to pay up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. This is... Ah... Uh, okay. There's a dog barking there. You want the dog to not be barking. You have to cycle the screen like this until the dog no longer is barking. You can't enter the house this... while the dog's barking. Specifically, you have to go to the right and back. Uh, if you just go back and forth, he'll just keep barking infinitely. Because you're technically not going far enough away from him to not hear you. So it actually makes sense. A lot it, that used to confuse me so much as a kid. Crap. All right, here we go. Forgot to dig. The hole is not big enough for Rosella to fit through. Another thing that I should also mention, um, you may notice like specific spots where Jam has been clicking over to walk to and it may seem like well why don't you just click the hot spot and have her do it have um the it just play out because it'll drop the speed that rosella or valenice walks to like the normal speed which is very slow so a lot of this is just you have to pull her you have to leash them around and say okay go over here now do it no come over here go do he's getting you kind of get used to it after a while we are in the antagonist's house, Malisha, uh, and we are rummaging for a device that will be used much later in the game. Mm -hmm. Going through and Rosie's doing some, uh, a review of her wardrobe. I think she kind of likes it. Very judgmental. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she is, I mean, she is royalty, so to each their own but she's got, she's got some nice stuff herself i mean her outfit right here is prima i mean she does like one of those things she keeps it oh little break dancing mm -hmm. little break dancing in malicia's house we'll take it <laughs> <laughs> we'll call that a 0.25 not bad <laughs> She's got some moves. Uh, Rosella, uh, she just walks faster in general and has a tendency to get stuck on certain things like that. Mm -hmm. You end up spinning around in circles. It does happen she's with younger. Valenice, but not nearly as much. She's younger than Valenice. She's got more energy. Spry, yes. Spry. Bunk. Yoink! Don't get to keep your cloak for the rest of the game. Werebear denies you. Fun fact about the Werebear Forest, it's the one spot in the game that we would think would be cool to try to find some kind of sequence break, but unfortunately, I cannot find a single out of bounds in there. It's yeah, the one being able to transition in... through the, the forest like that would be astronomical. It would skip m multiple chapters worth of stuff. You know, you, you go back and forth with both characters. It would be interesting to see how that would work. Um, a lot of hotspots only get activated when you have triggered them. They are triggered in order. So you have to do one for any of them to work. So you can't just like skip past them and then just go, unfortunately. So now we're back in Falderal. Uh, we're actually crossing paths with Valenice right now. But just we'll, missed we won't... her by a little bit. Yeah, we oh, won't actually run too. into her. We missed the party. We missed the birthday party, so. Apparently but we are following in her footsteps. 
she's apparently locked up somewhere right now, awaiting trial. Uh, we'll find out. Eventually. Moan thief. <laughs> you start some moan. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last this, trip into the powder room. And this, uh, the execution here is pretty tight, and the um, hitboxes are just a little wonky. A little, a little hard to click. Yeah, and it changes camera again into that weird mouse mode, so it kind of, like, throws you off if you're not ready for it. Jams is, Jams is seasoned uh, runner of this, so he's executing it very, very well. <laughs> Quite, quite the obvious. I mean, seasoned, but I don't know if my execution's that good. We're just making it happen. That's all. Okay, this this is very important for later in the game. I have to switch this from T to F, from troll to fairy, and uh, never look at it again till the very end. A little jam optimization right there. It kind of helps because chapter six, you're kind of frantic. It's it's a frantic chapter, and you kind of want to just make it as seamless as possible. All right, now we are tasked with returning the moon to where the moon belongs. But before we do that, we're gonna take a bite of the cheese. Yeah, delicious moon. Okay. Hundo, hundo run cheese now. <laughs> so if this is a hundo run. That's a PV. Nice. Right? No, I can't do hundo. There's too much. There's more Pretty stuff much. that we find every time we every time we play, so. So if anybody wants to try and uh, look, figure some stuff out for us, you could probably help us define <laughs> a, a hundo run. As the rule state in it, it's pending. Pending for now. Pending. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna trade that statuette for some. Ooh, look, it's already pre-made. Is that that's glitch state for you? Yeah. I'll take it. Wow. All right. All right. Hopefully it works. This is, <laughs> this is a new one. <laughs> this is scary. <laughs> I'm horrified right now. I mean, you didn't get that one glitch where it puts the, uh, it gives Balinese the, uh, the scepter or the, the wand. All right. Talk to the yeah, statue. He tells us to replenish the lake here, the water. Replenish the waters. This is uh, pretty standard fare until we get up to uh, Booga Booga Land where there's some um, pumpkin again. Right. And then after that, we're going to end up in the land of Etheria, I believe. Place called Theria. Yes, Etheria. Yeah. Beautiful place. Uh, I'm just going to click this on on Valenice and hope for the best, right? It looks like it's the stuff. It looks like the right stuff. Oh, no, it was not the right stuff, but it turned into <gasps> the right stuff. <laughs> we are good. We are I had good. I a feeling. That's, and that's my third that's never, so I can't say it, but. Uh oh. You know. <laughs> Don't boot him off stream. You have a run to finish. Uh, you know! <laughs> <laughs> right, here we go. Speedy speed. I, hey, I have the same yours. underpants. All right. It's <sighs> saved by our noble lord right here. You don't know how nervous I was about that salve. <laughs> salve, salve. I was so nervous. I could have probably All helped right. you, but I'm watching from a very small screen. We're good. <laughs> uh, pump, pump, pumpkin too. We have to do the same thing that we did before. Cycle the screen, try to get. All right, first try pumpkin. Let's go. Top screen is the fastest one to cycle as well. Fortunately. Pampkin, sing along. Pampkin, 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 pampkin. Pampkin. <laughs> so we only come in there for that one thing, the bone that we're going to give to a dog who's going to give us a, uh, a necklace. And then who knows what's going to happen? You know, it's a it's a mystery. Let's solve it together. Um, I don't know. It might, might be something necessary. 
Can you predict what's going to happen next? <laughs> Good doggo, the best doggo. Oh. Her name is Black Valiant. Black Valiant, yes. Good, goodest boy. The bestest boy. Let's give him a bone. Throw that doggy a bone. The bestest boy with a Scottish accent. He's just sad he didn't have enough frames of animation. And they had to keep reusing him over and over. <laughs> <laughs> Nom nom. Wag wag. Actually, one thing I should point out as well. Um, Jam mentioned it earlier that he's smacking the heck out of his uh, plus button on his keyboard. Um, that speeds the game up. And when it's, uh, you're spin seeing it pretty much going at the fastest speed the whole run. Um, if you, uh, not 1,000% sure on this on SEI2 engine, which this is running on. But um, if you have it at the highest, which is would be clocked at zero, that pretty much unthrottles it, which makes it run as fast as your computer can handle it, which has been mentioned before. But you can actually clock it down really low, and it gets really slow. Like almost yeah, speaking of slow. clocking your CPU, uh, this... Firecracker is directly tied to your CPU speed. Even with the throttled version of DOSBox, it will still explode in your inventory because your CPU is a million times faster than uh, than it used to be. So we're gonna see it blow up right here. Yep. Oh, but that was actually almost, pretty good. Almost made you it. Almost avoided it. Yep. Almost. There is a possibility to avoid it, but not always. Uh, there were versions of this game where you could not advance the game past that point because it would just blow up immediately upon pickup and you'd be salt blocked forever. First time I played this game, that happened to me. Yep. It was frustrating. So at least that's fixed now. Fortunately. Yes. It'd be impossible if it wasn't. <laughs> Suddenly we're in Etheria. That's a crazy transition, but we give the skull back to the headless horseman who allows us the use of his horse to fly to Etheria. And this here horse we are. has a really cool name of uh, Necromancer. Necromancer. It's a great name. So the first thing we're gonna do is uh, go past those like flying dragonfly, dragon fairies, you call them. dragon fairies, yes. <clears throat> and climb this uh, three-level mountain up here. And if he makes an appearance, we'll mention them. If not, he can remain unmentioned. Yes, an enigma. We, do, we don't want to jinx it. Chuck? I'm, I'm sorry, Jan. Chuck? <laughs> Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> That's never happened. That's oh, yeah, happened. no, that happens. Oh, my God, double, though. A double. At least we got the ambrosia. Let's get out of there. Let's just... <laughs> Chuck. All right, let's hope. No. <laughs> Look, Jam, if I say that later and he shows up immediately. I'll forgive you. Yes. If not. I promise. <laughs> I'm going to kick the you leave. Oh, my lord. <laughs> Stress this is stressful now. All right. I'm going to play a little tune on the hardest harp ever. Nice. That was, <laughs> that was something else. <laughs> uh, all right, I have to be careful not to click too much in here. Otherwise, the game will crash. Yeah, the fates very are slowly. touchy ladies. You got to be, got to be nice to them. They're very matter of fact. Too fast. You tell them what, they tell you what they want to say. You talk to them as much as you need to, and then you just let them wave you off. They're busy. All right. Now we are out of here. So we just got the Ambrosia, and we also learned about uh, a mysterious... Uh, did we learn about Mab yet? Mab? Is that what? We're going to go check on Mab, this uh, Keeper of Dreams, and see how she's doing. Yeah. It's been so long since I've heard the Fates talk that I don't know if they mentioned it off the bat. All right. Uh, yeah. Fart Simpson and Barley Trown is are banging some pots. <laughs> there. 
They are not intellectual property. One hundred percent guaranteed original characters. Just a lot of good characters in this game. I need to take a nap, Doctor Cadaver. Please let me sleep. Oh no! Come on, I know you. I talked to him twice. That's weird. What? Oh no. Oh no, glitch state, please. Oh, that's a glitch state. Oh. You might need to talk. Oh, yeah. I was afraid of this. Okay, I have a backup. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the backup. Yeah, I was thinking. Uh, not let's even use a backup to save. Him. Yeah. I'm gonna yeah, might, launch. You need to close. Here. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I got a. We got a backup for this. That yeah, glitch state uh, messed us up, so. We have a, a safety save right at the fate, so. Good old glitch state. I do so, believe. I don't know if it was right before or after the fates. Let's just, I think, it, yeah. Let's just go in to make sure. It's not a big time loss. Waiting for bated breath that this will work. All right, cool. <laughs> I do remember you telling me a long time ago, you found out, you're like, when you initially routed this game, you accidentally did it in the glitch state without even knowing. Yeah, yeah. And there was, I was always like, wait extra, a second. There was always an extra step we used to do. Well, I think glitch state gets worse and worse the more you go into the game. Like, if you do a chapter one and then you reset the chapter one, I think only chapter one is glitch stated. But if you do a chapter six and then restart the game, I think everything up to that point is going to be glitched. So, oh, it gets really glitched. <laughs> yeah. So, I think we were in like a chapter five glitch state, uh, which was messing everything up. It's all right. We get to see our good buddies again, real quick. Uh, last time. Go talk to Mort Cadaver. Oh, the gate's even closed. That's interesting. And good old Mort will actually uh, let us use his coffin to sleep in this time. Yes. Hopefully. You have to remember to click on him because he's very, very Couch coffin. thin. Yes, here we go. Perfect. Back to where we were. No problems. Woo. Crisis averted. Safety saves. All right, there's a cutscene here that lags out a little bit. We try to skip it as soon as possible. All right, this is Mab's temple. Mm -hmm. But instead of Mangle. finding Mab, we find a Mabsicle. It's horrifying. That just rolls towards us. <laughs> it's a rolling Mabsicle, yes. <laughs> So our whole goal right here is to free Lady Mab because she'll help us um, avert uh, Malicia's evil plot, which is to uh, uh, erupt a volcano that is underneath the uh, Troll Kingdom, which is going to go up and destroy Etheria and all the surrounding areas that we've visited so far. Yes, another Armageddon plot that we must yep. stop. But we stumbled upon that now we have to stop. You know, Malicia doesn't even consider you like an, uh, <laughs> a threat during most of this game. You know, you're more mm -hmm. like a nuisance. You just happen to cross her paths and be in her in her way. She doesn't like actively hunt you down. And she so, can kill you. But yeah, if you we'll do see. run into Malicia, of course, <laughs> you will be toast. Literally, she turns Some you into little... toast. One of those weird things, you know. I found out the other day that she turns you into a piece of toast if she kills you. I remember that, actually. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I was like, I'm toast. <laughs> Literally. It's pretty good. Nice little touch. So right, we had to we go just... and purify yeah. the big tree, turn her. She was the uh, lady of the forest. And we do that by giving her a pomegranate seed. I guess those are really special. Um, yes, the sacred pomegranate turned Lady Sirius from a tree back into a human or a mother nature, if you will. She's mother nature. Yes. And she says some stuff to us. And then we go on. 
All right, this is the second to last bit of RNG here. Another dog. And we got okay, no dog. Nice. Lucky. Uh, good job, Cuddles. We'll take that. Yep, we'll take that. Uh, just like in chapter two, uh, chapter three, four. Chapter four. <laughs> last chapter we just did. Uh, having to go back and forth. Uh, what? I got zapped. No. Why can't I, I go think up? It's uh, you have to use the thing. Oh. What thing? Uh, uh-oh. This. No. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Why did it do that? I've never had to do that before. Um. That's strike three. I'm sorry. Ah, yeah. You're thanks out. for watching, everybody. <laughs> uh, I hope you enjoyed King's Quest Seven. Uh, it was a fun run. <sighs> so, this is um, a game. There's... Yeah, this is a game and a half. So what's supposed to happen right there, and for some reason, um, there's a, there's that puzzle that you literally just saw right there executed by Jam in a fit of uh, confusion. Um, for some reason, the Sierra programmers admitted that in the 2.0 release, um, that's, which is the version that we're currently running on. Um, I don't know why. There must have been some reason. Maybe it just glitched out, or maybe it was too hardware intensive or something. I don't know. But anyways, normally when you run through the whole game, that is literally emitted. So what happens is Cuddles doesn't even come to the knot hole. You can just click it and it skips it. Yeah, I've never seen Cuddles at that, that knot hole, so. Some, like, reason with him starting from Chapter 5, I guess, that just works like that. It's so crazy, I guess yeah. Game's just filled with Swiss, it's just a big piece of Swiss cheese that you got to slingshot into the sky. I'm gonna have to do like a fresh build of this game <laughs> to do more runs on it. Like forever cursed now. It's just getting weird. It's, it's getting so weird. It's all right. We don't have much f much further to go. This is the end of uh, getting towards the end of chapter five. Then chapter six is a short one. So this whole section right here, um, if you're not aware of what you need to do, you could probably skip it and get stuck in a casual playthrough because it's kind of uh, uh, kind of. It's not something you think about you need to do, but the crystal we stole from Malicia's house, you had to imbue it with light, sunlight, and the only place where there's a direct beam of sunlight is this little temple we were in with the uh, big scorpion act in chapter one. Yes, concentrated beam of sunlight. Focused mm -hmm. sunlight. Focused. We need that to uh, free Lady Mab. Yes, it's the only thing that will shatter that ice but now we need a way to get it there. So we're going to go ask the fates for some help. Mm-hmm. Do another we... jam on the uh, heart. <laughs> okay, it's just like the first time we have to take it nice and easy in here. This is a place that the game is prone to not working with you. It likes to crash. Shh, don't I want to use the C word. But... Uh-oh. It's okay. We're good. We're good. We're through it. We're good. We're yeah, safe. it could crash there. <laughs> I trust the lady in the middle to be the nicest of the three. Uh, I went with the uh, since spiky hair this time. Yep. I usually go with the uh, ice cream cone soft serve lady. She's a nice lady too. Yes, she is one of the best. Oh, little break dance. There's some parts where you can just hold down the button as opposed to spamming it, and it's just as fast, if, if not a little faster. That was one of the spots where I could have done it. I chose not to. Oh, hi. Oh. That's a third sighting. Third okay. Oh! Misclick. Got eaten. That has oh, happened no. before. <laughs> Don't worry about that. <laughs> Luckily, the game is really forgiving when you die. You just literally pop up right there. I guess Sierra lost their edge later on. Didn't want people getting too frustrated with their game. Yeah, there's checkpoints everywhere. Every screen has a checkpoint, pretty much. So nice. So here's Guonum from um, The Faces of Evil. <laughs> yeah, uh, I can see the resemblance. If only he had like a magic carpet or something. <gasps> <gasps> <laughs> there he is. It is him. <laughs> <laughs> We're off. We're off. <laughs> All 
All right, that lets us go to the dream world uh, in in the flesh. But now we're at a nightmare. Nightmares hate nightmares, so we came prepared. Import important little thing about this uh, fight right here between these two nightmares, if uh, this is the one section where you actually want to take your finger off a of plus, because for some reason, if you hold it, the uh, nightmare will come and just immediately get you. Gobble you up. All right. We Very are back strange. at the temple of Mab. We are going to defrost her. Set, her, set Mab to defrost. And use the crystal on Lady Mab, and she's free. Three hours, you have your... Uh, <laughs> ready ready to go uh, alright she's gonna give you the horse bridle which we're gonna use and to get to, to upper the Ethereum. best part of the run and this will be the end of this chapter depending on how well this last bit of RNG goes this horse can take 5 seconds or it can take 50 seconds literally the killer of runs or the bringer of of awesome runs uh so we're just gonna sit here and wait yes franklin bones we're waiting i am unclear if we have lost jam's audio there's like literally voice, nothing you so... can do yeah but wait franklin bones we're waiting for the horse This is, this is not a good horse. <laughs> Here we go. And now we're gonna go and, oh. Oh, but Barasco came through. Okay, we avoided Barasco. We're good. Chapter complete, chapter six, go. No. All right, two troll kings are fighting. I'm gonna use the wand on, okay. Okay, it was not set to fairy, it was set to troll. We're going to use this wand on the fake Troll King, the one with the green eyes, and turn him back into... We haven't seen him in a while. But there he is. Oh, Franklin, please don't bite me. I love you. Edgar from uh, King's Quest. Four? Four. Last time we seen him, he was a green. Discord check. Discord check. Oh, I lost Discord. Shovel our way out. Alright. I can hear you. Hey, I can hear you now. That's good. Yes. Hi. Good. Uh, yeah, this okay. chapter is mostly on rails. There's a few spots that I have to click on certain points, but uh, most of it's cutscene. Time's going to be coming up in like two minutes, give or take. So. Uh, bo -bo -bo -bo. No way, Jim. Yeah. Did you get it's the time flower? to come back from the popcorn? Oh, the flower. No, I did not. Look at that. Uh -oh. I don't have the flower. Can I leave? Are we going to get bad ending? No. We're good. No, you're good. <laughs> the volcano good. timer we're is good. ticking. Yeah, we're, we'll be fine with that. Yeah. It will be fine. It's going to be fine. So there is a volcano timer that happens. Um, I don't know exactly how much time it is, but it is quite a while. Um, if you somehow wait it out, you will uh, you will die. I'll just no, play like an fine. animation of it, of it exploding, and that's that. Oh, no, I have to do the whole thing again. That's right. Okay. Well, that's fine.
<laughs> you did something he didn't want you to do. That animation was amazing. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is fantastic. Oh, this game never ceases to amaze. Never. So good. All right. We're good. I feel like the lava is like right there at the top. It's it's bubbling over. I'm sure. I'm pretty sure that. like we just barely made it. <laughs> All right. I love that animation with the two. It just like goes up. It's about to pop and then just goes back down. <laughs> All right. We saved the world. Crisis averted. Everyone's happy. Even right. Edgar. Even Edgar. Surprise, Felicia. They have a little uh, wizard duel. Keep an eye on, uh, on King Otar, by the way. He's got the best uh, reactions to this. <laughs> that was a cheap shot. Oof. All right. We're gonna zap Malisha with this fully charged thing that we stole from her drawer. And now she's a baby. Now she's a baby. And uh, yeah, Cuddles is not impressed. Time is gonna be when I put this life on Edgar. It's gonna be just after this next animation. So I will give you a little countdown here. But first we need to zap the poodle. Zap the dog. This is for funsies. It's only about a second yeah, slower, it, and it's super cute. Yeah. Right, so time is now. Time. Clap. Thank you. Clap. GG's. Hey, with a lot of bad stuff happening, we'll take it. I we'd never see you again. Thank you so much, Jam. That was a treat. Uh, I'm sure Chad enjoyed it as much as we did here, especially behind the scenes. Uh, watch this one back. You're going to enjoy it. Yes. Um, <laughs> And thank you, Chuck. Uh, amazing commentary through and through. Of course. Good to 642, by the way, Jim. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> Very good, given that circumstance. Given everything that happened, yeah. <laughs> yes, and Frankie Bones. Thank you. Yeah, we heard, we, we, we heard some Frankie. Thank there you go, yeah. Coming. Good boy. <laughs> Best commentator. Sorry, Chuck. Uh, it's all right. <laughs> all right well that is uh just about it for us uh i do want to just reiterate one of the announcements that i made earlier as soon as i find it here in my script hold on shuffle 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 lots of papers okay uh your subs gift subs amazon prime subs and bits cheered on the gdq twitch channel help support our weekly hotfix content i thank you so much for supporting our shows we really appreciate it um we are, are not going to go on a raid today uh, because, as I mentioned, we also have another thing coming up on Hotfix here very shortly, starting in about 30 minutes. Uh, Big John's Jumble Matic. Uh, it's going to be, I'm just seeing randomizer and randomized goals. I have no idea what it is, but it's going to be excited. I know I'm going to be tuned in, so you should too. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for coming out and watching. Thank you to all of the runners as well as Chuck writing the commentary. Uh, this has been an absolute blast. And if you enjoyed this, if you enjoyed any of these runs, any of these seven runs, plus the one task, join the King's Quest Discord. Um, they're looking for runners. They would be happy to show you the ropes. Um, and it, it's just a great community. But uh, that's it for me. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. Take it easy.